handled it real mature, but Mr. J was super broke up about it. Last year, we talked quite a bit about Margot Robbie being the executive producer of the Barbie movie. She pitched and produced the Barbie movie under the banner of Lucky Chap Entertainment. Lucky Chap is the production company that Margot Robbie founded with her husband and Sophia Kerr and Jose McNamara. Starting with I, Tanya in 2017, Margot Robbie has taken the helm in pitching and producing projects. Most of them have ended up starring her, but not all of them. One film that Margaret Robbie produced but didn't act in was Emerald Fennell's Promising Young Woman. Lucky Chap's mission has been to try to promote female stories from female storytellers, and thereby to bridge the gap of gender inequality in the film industry, employing female directors, screenwriters, and producers. Today we're going to talk about one of the projects that Margaret Robbie produced and starred in. That is, of course, Birds of Prey, subtitle added later in the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. There are two ways that diamond's coming out of you. This way... Or this way. The DC Extended Universe has had several fits and starts over the last few years. Their attempts to bring superheroes together, like the Justice League, Aquaman, and Batman vs. Superman, have been controversial and often unpopular. However, a bright spot in the DC Extended Universe has been Harley Quinn. Introduced first in the 2016 fairly unpopular version of Suicide Squad, directed by David Ayer where Jared Leto's obnoxious Joker performance and off-screen antics seemed to have distracted from everything else. Margot Robbie stood out as Joker's more sympathetic girlfriend, Harley Quinn. After Suicide Squad flopped, Warner Brothers wanted to keep working with Margot Robbie, who decided to pitch a non-standalone, standalone Harley Quinn film. Non-standalone because she wanted to bring in a team of friends. While I was researching Harley, of course, I was devouring the comics became kind of obsessed with them. At some point, I stopped even reading just Harley comics because I just was really enjoying the comics. So that sort of rabbit hole led me to the Birds of Prey comics. And it seemed like a good um, platform for a female ensemble. DC had several Harley Quinn projects in development, but Margaret Rowley put her weight behind Birds of Prey, which she wanted to produce and hire a female screenwriter and director. She brought in Christina Hodson and Kathy Yan, respectively, a young promising screenwriter and director for Margaret Robbie to produce the film around. Christina Hudson, who's now working with James Gunn on the rest of the DC Extended Universe, had her official screenwriting debut with Shut In, a 2016 psychological thriller that she wrote and sold. Kathy Yon's directorial debut, Dead Pigs, came out just two years before Birds of Prey. Oh, well, hell. <laughs> Say no more. Stay laughing, sir. You saw me on combat? Birds of Prey stars Mary Winstead, Journey Smollett-Bell, Rosie Perez, Ella J. Basco, and Ewan McGregor as the villain Black Mask. It was time for Gotham to meet the new Harley Quinn. So I really put myself out there. In Birds of Prey, Harley Quinn appears after breaking up with the Joker. Throughout the film, her self-doubt about whether she can stand on her own, stand alone you might say, is a recurring joke and plot point. Without the protection and toxic connection to the Joker, or Mr. J as she calls him the entire time. That's when I met him, Mr. J. 
All the people in Gotham who Harley Quinn has slighted, pranked, or hurt are now free to exact their revenge on her for whatever their grievance is. Of course, nobody has more grievances than Ewan McGregor's Black Mask. It's not a party without a little drama, am I right? Come on! Turn it up! Shots in the house! Black Mask, real name Roman Sionis, is a theatrical, narcissistic, self-obsessed crime boss. Go show those little bitches. You don't mess with Roman Sionis! He's on the brink of being the biggest crime boss in all of Gotham. And funny enough, the actual action of the film revolves around his whole deal, his desire to get the Bertinelli diamond and all of the riches of Gotham's former crime family in charge, the relationship he has with his new driver, the singer Black Canary, who gets shoved into being his driver because Harley breaks his old driver's legs, Rosie Perez is the cynical detective Rene Montoya, who's trying to build a case against Sionis, and the vigilante named the Huntress, who's trying to hunt down her family's diamond and kill the killers of the Bertinelli family, played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead. They call me the crossbow killer. They call me the crossbow killer? They call me Huntress. And Cassandra Kane, the young pickpocket, was accidentally spoiled the diamond everyone wants. Harley Quinn is incidental to all of this, except that she's first up on the Black Mask list because of a long list of grievances. I'm building a better- Seriously, you don't have to, really. You're building a criminal empire because daddy kicked you out of Janice court and you think this is a big fuck you, but in actuality, it's a very misguided attempt to win back his respect. I get it. You're really not as complicated as you think. And because she's incidental, she has the opportunity to prove that she can stand on her own. Birds of Prey is interesting because it's more of a personal breakup and emancipation movie than your regular comic book hero or I guess anti-hero movie, which takes place largely in Harley Quinn's head and around her trademark narration, which also leaves plenty of room for bits and comedy, which honestly, Birds of Prey wouldn't have worked without. Come again? I said, I can't. One more time. I can't give it to you. Why not? Because I ate it, okay? It's stylized the way that feels true to being a comic book movie, and also feels true to the theatrical and over-the-top Harley Quinn character. The Black Mask is clearly a stand-in for the character of the Joker, a weaker but just as theatrical figure for Harley to overcome. At the end of the film, as the three new friends, Black Canary, Renee Montoya, and the Hunter split off into the Birds of Prey, a vigilante team of all-women crime fighters, Harley Quinn still stands alone, well, with Cassandra as a new friend and sidekick. And this makes it feel more organic and less like an all-female-led superhero movie. She's got rage issues. I don't have rage issues! You know, psychologically speaking, vengeance rarely brings the catharsis we hope for. Yeah. Are we ready? Bad guys, just outside. Tonight's show is brought to you by Yabiga. A Balkan Rakia spirit, go to yabiga.com to order a bottle tonight. Anyway, before I introduce the panel, please like this video and subscribe to the Movie Night Extravaganza YouTube channel. Hit that bell to get notified whenever we're streaming. Also, we are now monetized, so if you have any pressing questions during this live stream, send us a super chat, which helps me keep the show running, which I am obligated by international law, human rights law, to answer. We also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash movie night extra. All of our after parties are on there forever. We also have a new Discord and a Letterboxd HQ account, so those are two more places to follow along with us. Links are in the description. Okay, let me introduce the panel. Conan Neutron, host of Bretonic Reversal, co-host of Movie Night Extravaganza, and frontman for Conan Neutron and the Secret Friends, NeutronFriends.Bandcamp.com. Conan Neutron and the Secret Friends has a new split LP with Lung, Adult Prom, available now on Bandcamp. Christina Oaks is streaming on Twitch at Cosmopolitics, twitch.tv slash Cosmopolitics. Also recently joined YouTube, she's on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Cosmopolitics. Send her some subs on Twitch, and send her a coffee. J. Andrew World, illustrator, book cover artist, artist for Give Them an Argument, co-host for Movie Night Extravaganza, and Bad Takes. Mackenzie Wilkes is the co-host of the Criterion Connection podcast and the Austin Danger podcast. I, of course, am your host, Mr. F. That's right, Boris Miller, and I'm going to be letting everyone fight out their grievances against me tonight. If you have a grievance, <laughs> send me a super chat. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm loving the Dune eyes for that one. Uh, Mackenzie, welcome to the show. Thanks Hello. for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to have you. Yes. Hmm. So, 
Uh, let me start off this by saying, yes, I'm dressed as Harley. And second of all, when... Yeah, let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see the full... Oh, yeah, let's yeah, yeah. Let's, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll solo lay out this. full right, screen, go. yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, go. let's go. <laughs> you got the mallet? Jesus. I, did that. Yeah, I mean, that's... I also... Well, let me... Sh- the mallet is plastic, but I'm going to get the real one once I make more money. But this <laughs> wow. is the authentic... You got multiple mallets. Okay. Oh! The oh. Baseball bat. Oh, weaponry. It's wow. made of wood. It's, a re- it's the real bat. Real replica of the baseball bat. So I can actually use this as a weapon. Like, that can knock that's... people out. Th- wow. That is like All a right. wall sword to some people. Yeah. That, so that, that, that is that, that is a serious business to put it bluntly. Uh yep. <laughs> you should have you should have uh you should have like I don't know like shotgunned a, a Red Bull right before coming on so you could do the really, really fast talkie that she does whenever she gets stressed. Or a line of coke. I mean that would work too. <laughs> or a breakfast sandwich. Yeah, yeah. I had that, that earlier, worked, yeah. so oh, there you, I also, I you also are being method. Confetti. Yeah. I also got the uh the confetti jacket so that's for the after party nice 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 <laughs> uh been a while so we were talking about put this on the dock like last year and uh, yeah, yeah yeah right for my birthday uh, i was very right. disappointed that we didn't get to it we did uh interstellar yeah instead. well the story <laughs> behind that is that i was supposed to get uh galaxara on who was featuring on the soundtrack and then uh who sang with sweetie but she's kobe kind of took a dive with her career so she's kind of focused on that and i understand that so but it would yeah. been cool to have her on as an addition too. But. Yeah, you're almost there with you know talking fast. I guess <laughs> yeah. I do talk fast. What are you talking about? <laughs> but it worked out just fine because we got Mackenzie on for this. Hello. Exactly. I did. Yeah, I'm not on the soundtrack and I'm not qualified, but I am here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like the, the the bar for being qualified is real low on the show. Like, yeah, like, I like am a woman of it? loving Harley Quinn experience. I feel like that's what yeah. I mean. that's more qualified than most. sometimes it's just like, have you seen a movie before? Good, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> hey you kid you ever seen a movie get over here <laughs> yeah I, I, it, it, it is a very i wouldn't call it a stringent criteria but it's definitely a unique criteria like i think, yeah. I think there's some people that it wouldn't work at all yeah. i think yeah. this this is this yeah, is a, the people that have never seen a movie right exactly yeah. uh there we go well, why do you want the, show? <laughs> the bar is low they let me come on but uh, Ron, you are very time. qualified you are you are wonderful we love Stop. having you Stop. On. You, let a, you let a conversation go on about nebraska for like two hours so it worked <laughs> <laughs> now was, uh, was for some for some who don't probably a lot of people know this is that this was probably the last movie a lot of people saw before COVID really took a dive like took a hit and shut down like movie right. theaters and everything and I remember it was my first cosplay time, like first time ever cosplaying Harley. And I remember a few weeks later, I got something in the mail. Was it Jared it was Leto? A, oh. It was a put in. It was a put in choker. And quite a few of us Harley cosplayers got like something in the mail. And I'm like, did Warner Brothers through like Margot Robbie Whoa. like see our Instagram posts about our cosplays? Because I looked at my bank account, nothing was taken out of Amazon. Someone had to have found my address <laughs> and sent me a gift for wow. cosplaying Harley. Yeah, I still oh. have it. It's weird. I'm like, okay. Well, there's also yeah. some weird guys on the internet. I mean, who knows? You know? Well, <laughs> well, it wasn't. I mean, I mean, considering it was a You're Birds wait, of Prey weird guys cosplay. in the internet. <laughs> considering it was Birds of Play cosplay, I, I doubt men were searching for those cosplays. Considering they hate Birds of Prey. I, yeah, I, I mean, not this man. Like this man loves it. No, no, not this man. Between like her. Uh, <laughs> Hashtag not all men. Thank you. <laughs> this, which is like a movie that she kind of put together. And they're costuming in like the other, uh, you know, like um, Harley Quinn movies that she isn't necessarily like, ha- like in creative control over. Yeah, I-, I feel like the this movie she's definitely she's definitely like more covered. Like everybody is kind of more covered than uh, you know when they yeah. have a dir- like a male director doing male gaze, I guess, throughout the yeah. like production process. But don't worry, guys. Uh, David Ayer reassures us they're still gonna be sexualizing Margot, but more Jared Leto in the air cut. Yeah, exactly. Everybody, I think everybody, everybody wanted. Now, everybody, everyone gets a little leg like, um, <laughs> like, yeah. I would, dude. I would love a crack at, at a couple movies like the, the Matt Reeves, <laughs> the Batman. I, dude, I have that down to a tight ninety. This, 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 <laughs> this is a Conan Neutron cut. They're like, who's, who's Conan Neutron? They're like, look, there, all right, we're giving some guy. Anyone do a cut? Okay, this is some people. He has a loud jacket and an authoritative voice. We just let him do a cut of the film. Some <laughs> people thought this movie was too long, though. I'm like, what do you mean it was too long? It was under two hours. It it moves along really quickly though, like it feels yeah, like yeah. a ninety minute movie to me. Like and, yeah. and, and that's something that I noted because of Harley's narration of the movie. Yeah, it 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 moves right along, and it's amazing to me, Christina. You mentioned the Discord when we did the watch party that you saw it in the theater because uh, I bet it would have killed in the theater. It was so great because it's so funny. It's it a was funny movie. And I I like many people saw it on HBO Max, which of course is now Max, the one to watch. 
and it was uh, at one point <laughs> <laughs> until they named it Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like like let's let's get rid of the thing that let's get the part of the name that people like and then associate with quality things and let's use the other one that was associated with skin flex. Mm-hmm. Like, like, at twelve a.m. in the morning. Anyway, it's like right. uh, you know HBO is too premium for the amount of people that have HBO Max now. And they're like, <laughs> we got We can't let like the plebs kind of feel like they all got HBO. But uh, yeah, like this was if I remember correctly, one of the first films that uh, they did kind of most of the release was direct to streaming. It was, it was this and uh, yep. Wonder, Wonder Woman 1984. <laughs> I have not watched, by the way, you know, congratulate me on that. Uh... You're, you're not, you're not missing much. You ain't missing much. The colors yeah. look good. You, you, you dig, you'd yeah. probably dig that aspect. Yeah. Yeah. It. No, I, I like the mise en scene of what I've seen from it. And I love Pedro watching... Pascal. Innocent. Yes. He yeah. was great, but like, <laughs> he'd be better. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just like, you know, I can't, I can't even, even though they got the George Perez costume, they got the, the golden yeah. armor from the George Perez issues. And they're just like, nice. Uh, uh, skip, but it. No, skip, it. skip it. Skip it. Stream skip it. Skip it. Yeah. But like, I think this movie, this, the, it, it kind of fell through the cracks, right? Because people didn't know what was going on. To a yeah. Certain they're like, is like, this a Harley movie? Oh, this is like a knockoff, like Paris of the Caribbean and Deadpool and you know, women can have successful R-rated comedies. I mean, Bridesmaids was sure a success, but what do I know? Right. <laughs> well, we no, that one doesn't support our arguments. We don't. We don't acknowledge that one. And also, mm-hmm. how is this movie rated R? Like, like <laughs> bloody it's, violence. It's yeah, probably the, the bones that bend in different directions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> it's maybe a little bit more violent. And the f bombs. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, the f bombs probably too. So. I but like I mean, how like, they they changed it to to shits in the trailer. But not two fucks. I'm like, you can't say fuck on a trailer anymore. Like, what, what happened? Really? Yeah. Is... No one gives two okay. shits who we are beyond that. Like, I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, it's the F-bomb in the in the movie, though. Like, what? What happened? I feel like this would be an equal footing for, you know, the devil entering the children's ears when they hear it. But I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. not. Well, they, yeah. they let you say they let you say one fuck uh, per season on, like, TV 14 stuff now. Yeah. Oh, man. Or just one F-bomb those. in, like. PG, just PG thirteen general, like, or even like a yeah. PG film, yeah. like you get well, one. I remember wa- Walking Dead. They had a uh, they they let I think like I think they let Rick say it, but Walking Dead one they finally let them say fuck in one episode. They had like a big dramatic <laughs> moment at the end of one of the things, and he's like, I, th- I think it was Negan that actually got to say it, but he's like, I don't give a fuck. And then you're like, oh yeah, look at this guy. This show is really uh, this show is really you know maxing out. So now. it's so edgy. It definitely hasn't jumped the shark at least five times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't well, think I realized. Oh, sorry. Oh no, Mackenzie, please. I was well, going to bring you I in. I don't think I realized that it was it was rated P R because I'm curious if it maybe would have done better, quote unquote, if it was rated PG thirteen because it could have yeah. played the teen girls a bit yes. more. But well, um, it's only yeah, sunny Philadelphia addressed this issue where you know no one's <laughs> going to rate our movies because most likely people are just pirating them. MPAA versus Sunny in Philadelphia. I remember that case very well. Went to the Supreme Court, right? If I remember <laughs> yes. <that>. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The, the whole wanted, thing was Marta uh, wanted to be like an R-rated like comedy for, yeah, for like, yeah. women. Like she didn't, she didn't want this to be like. And this is the problem that I had when I saw the first Suicide Squad movies. That's uh, like my Dang. ex and I, we got all dressed up and we went and like so many guys were like either on their phones within two minutes or like looking up every time there was a shot of Margot Robbie's tits or ass or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, I see what's happening here. She's eye candy. And then I was like, I was telling my ex, and he's like. Did you notice that she's like eye candy in this? I'm like not taken seriously. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I'm hoping there might be an- another movie that comes out eventually with like her because a lot of people said that a lot of people love Margot Robbie as Harley. And I feel like this none of this would have worked out without Margot's involvement, like as the actress and as like a producer right. and having creative control over that character because you could tell she actually really loves playing Harley and really giving the fans what they want. And she pitched it like she's yeah. the, the in the same way that she pitched, you know, like the Barbie movie. Not to like compare. I mean, I feel like that's kind of her angel and well, her. Demon. Well, without Birds Are... of Prey, there wouldn't be a Barbie movie. But she she was able to actually go and pitch this, and they had a bunch of different projects, I guess, that they were working for working on. Yeah, that were all like different Harley Quinn projects. Gotham City Sirens, and a Joker and Harley movie. Which she, she threw her weight behind this one, but which she like came up with on her own. Like she was the one that came up with the idea to do it as Birds of Prey because she was, I guess. 
Like I have, I have a, I have a clip of her talking about it. Which, which, was, which uh, and that, that's actually interesting because people compare it to Deadpool for obvious reasons. But Ryan Reynolds' journey towards getting Deadpool the way he wanted it on the whatever you think about the character or the movie is like mm-hmm. it, it's it, there's a mirror to that. That it's people were like, what, what? No, that way you can't do an R-rated superhero movie. Like no way. And, he and then just, they're like, you can't do an R-rated superhero movie with women. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. So then it just became sexist, right? Exactly. Absolutely. So those are talking about uh, pitching it or like coming up with the idea. Okay, cool. I started putting together a pitch for Birds of Prey when we were still shooting Suicide Squad. And I uh-huh. knew for quite some time how there was just a real gap in the market for a female ensemble action film. And I love action films, and I think there's a misconception perhaps subconsciously for people that, well, action films are for dudes, girls don't really like them, which is just not true. I love them. I know heaps of other women who love them. But um, at the end of the day, a good story, a good cast, a good characters, universal despite gender. So I uh, couldn't understand why there weren't more. I loved movies like the... Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, Lucy Liu, Charlie's Angels growing up. So I knew I wanted to to find that and help put that on a screen somewhere. While I was researching Harley, of course, I was devouring the comics, became kind of obsessed with them. At some point, I stopped even reading just Harley comics because I just was really enjoying the comics. So that sort of rabbit hole led me to the Birds of Prey comics. And it seemed like a good um, platform for a female ensemble. A Harlequin's role is to serve. It's nothing without a master. No one gives two shits who we are beyond that. First and foremost, I wanted to do an R-rated film. And I think audiences are just really responding to being surprised. I think this movie does that, Birds of Prey is surprising and it's fun and it's told from Harley's point of view. So you've got a very unreliable narrator giving terrible advice and an inaccurate account of, of events quite often. Very fun, I think, for people to get a slice of Harley's point of view and Harley's world and the DNA of the film kind of reflects Harley's personality. What are you talking about that for me, William? I've really enjoyed watching the women in particular walk out of it and they just all seem a little more pumped up than usual. Like... Like come at me, well, it's fun. I, I I think you get that feeling of like, oh wow, I can I can do shit. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I was so pumped after seeing that movie. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna see it again before the movie theaters close. Well, what do you so? What do you think, Mackenzie? Uh, what what do you th- what do you think about what Margo was saying there? I mean, yeah, I, I completely agree with it because I think about like growing up, the times in which I saw a woman be really really awesome are the movies that stuck with me so deeply growing up because charlie's angels movies were on constant yeah. repeat i love that she said that because i still watch those at least like five times a year if not more like i am Same. obsessed i just got the 4k of the, of the physical <laughs> media nerds that's Way awesome away. she's beautiful um 4k charlie's angels is the greatest thing in the world um yeah, formative for both my just like perception of womanhood and and also my sexuality. Like you know, I'm lesbian, and so growing up, you're like, wow, why am I obsessed with this girl who kicks people men in the face? I don't know yeah. why. And then <laughs> then it all connects when you turn about eighteen. And then you know, Kill Bill oh. was huge for me in high school, and like Kill Bill was, I was like, that was the first time I'd ever seen a woman with a sword just murder ninety people in a matter of ten minutes. And I was like, that is, I'm obsessed with this, and. And high school was also where I started getting into DC comics and falling in love with the female characters of those comics. I mean, obviously, you know, Catwoman's iconic, Harley's iconic, Poison Ivy. I'm, I'm dying for a Gotham City Sirens movie because Margot is like, please let me kiss Poison Ivy. And I'm like, Margot, yes, I'm behind you 100%. Karen Gillum um, wants to play Ivy. Just get Approved. somebody in. That is greenlit. <laughs> yeah. Let's start production um, immediately. <laughs> Barbara Gordon was always my favorite back, you know, the OG Batgirl. Oh, yeah. She was always like my number one fave character. And I was getting into comics and in DC around the time they were doing one of their many refreshes where they were like, yeah, it's the new 52. We're going <laughs> to do whatever. Um, and so the annual kind of, refresh. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was kind of great for me because then I was like, cool, I can dive in on like issue one of Batgirl or issue one of Harley Quinn. And so I don't know. Yeah. This was definitely like a time period in my life where I was just glomming onto characters like this because i think dc i i'm i'm a dc over marvel person which and it's less that i it's more i like dc and i have no opinions about marvel and i think that that kind of 
excuse i, I feel like I, 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 I hear a bunch of haunches going up in, across the world listening to this <laughs> I, I don't that. know but, I, yeah, yeah. I don't, it, is, is that really that it's just they haven't executed a live action yeah. very well. better yeah and and like but i've always liked the characters of dc more and i've always liked the women of dc much more um and so yeah well, as soon as i knew there was a harley quinn movie coming out i was like cool i'm seated opening weekend and i was i was also it was either this or emma was the last movie i saw before shut down i can't remember oh, wow. which one exactly because emma also came out in like march ish march april um but yeah i also probably saw this before lockdown i can't remember which movie but it was definitely i saw this in theaters and it was just like it was everything i dreamed rocked. of that must have been great i, mean, I like, was like i was yeah. like no notes this is everything i ever wanted it was just like a movie about like women and I even think about some of those scenes I was writing in my notes a lot, like the scenes where it's just like her and Cassandra in the apartment like that. You've never yeah. seen that in other types of comic book movies yes. because they want to just keep moving to the action. But I think this movie balances the action with the character so well. And we're like, we get these great moments of people just talking and, I kind of love how normal Harley's life feels. Like she has yeah. an apartment and she goes to the grocery store. It kind of reminds yeah. me of some of my favorite recent Star Wars has she all been about the normal people. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. The, well, that's the, that's yeah. 100%. Sorry to interrupt, but like like Andy and I were talking about this, I think in the Discord, right? Where we're talking about there's a Matt Fraction run on Hawkeye. Sorry, Marvel. Yes. But like, yes. it's amazing because you get to see like his superintendent and like his neighbors and stuff. And it's like, it, when the, and, and I was like, oh, wow, what if they did that for the series? Which of course they didn't. They didn't do that because no. that would be that They would teased be that they were going to. Like it seemed yeah, like uh, so from the commercials they could have gone in that direction. They definitely uh, pulled from the fraction run. My fiance does love that run of Hawkeye. So I am aware It's so of that. good. I mean, I'm not even a big Hawkeye. From the series. Like the, the dog. Like there was a lot of things from that fraction series. I feel like that were pulled into the Hawkeye yeah. series. But yeah. But they just had it sort of, and it'd be like government cheese, uh, you know, the norm, yeah. normal Marvel stuff that's yeah. not like Loki or, uh, you know, into, into the more interesting ones. But I, I think that's super interesting. And, and it's also interesting that you were a fan of the comics before because I, I personally do like DC comics, but I'm not as well versed as even some people on the panel, really. Uh, but have been kind of been catching up in the same way that I basically started catching back up with movies when I couldn't tour. <laughs> that I've been going back and like and checking all of them out, and I was super fascinated at the time. So there's two DC movies that I that I really like, and we've now covered both of them because we're doing Birds of Prey now. The other one is The Suicide Squad. Those are the only those are the only two I've ever seen. It's the only honestly well, man I've, I've so it, far. Yeah, we get it. Uh, I've seen Batman <laughs> versus Superman in in small. We don't watch any Snyder <laughs> movies over here. No. I, I I was at somebody's house and they were all like we were all drinking at their house and they had uh, Batman versus Superman. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll drink it. No, they, they had it on in the background, like during a party, and I was like, yeah, I, I don't think this this party's yeah, not for well, me. Th th that, that's that's the correct move. <laughs> Go to a different party that has better movies for sure. Yeah. But what, what I was gonna, what I was actually driving at is that it's interesting to me that to have a, a character brought. It, it, a relatively obscure character because people that knew the Batman animated series, which was brilliant and beautiful and wonderful, uh, Harley Quinn was a, a. If you watched that show, you knew from that character. But people like normies did not know who Harley Quinn was. So it took the really bad Suicide Squad movie uh, and and her playing that role to bring it to attention. But then yeah, it was all like sex pot, sex pot, sex pot. Yeah. You know, big male gaze. So what's so interesting about this is she managed to take a character that's been put into the popular consciousness, redefine it completely to be nuanced and interesting and like an anti-hero and sort of like no you get an idea of like who she actually is and then it's it's hard to describe because the suicide squad which with a much bigger budget and and much more uh, energy and momentum behind it cemented that that she managed to take a character that was already defined by popular culture just a couple years earlier and totally redo it and do it in such a way that was interesting and cool and stuck I yeah, feel like she's more like independent good, now. Like, yeah, this is a good uh, like like balance of where normies are on this because there was a minute there, in like 2016 or 2017, yeah. when uh, it was like the most white trash people you like that I knew. Press up much. a Joker like, and Harley or, from that. Yeah, movie. or no, like, and it was girls that are clearly like in like an abusive relationship and like the guy they're with. Right, and they would get like tattoos. They're like she was crappy tattoo team. shop energy. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I know like, what you're saying. Yeah, sure. and then so I feel like this this movie definitely balanced out because you don't you don't really see that anymore. Now Harley Quinn's kind of, kind of more like a fleshed out character and like yeah, the she has that, like the people that you know that probably can't even read. 
like still get that tattoo like misspelled or whatever like they're they're not as uh they're not as hyped on the, the, the gummo crowd sure yeah. but 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 again we mentioned barbie you don't get a barbie you don't get a, a, like a margo with that kind of sway to be able to pull off something as, as uh, big as barbie without she's, this for she's sure she's good at persuasion i'll tell you that <laughs> well i mean and they're both warner brothers you know like she both times right she's yeah. warner brothers as her uh main. Again, she's gonna make a sims for a sims movie <laughs> the impossible, the impossible mission of pulling that movie off and having it be as, as smart and like unique of a take as it is is uh, you know something that we, we we covered that on that episode. We don't need to redo it, but I yeah. but I think it's notable because she redefined the character and after basically the character not being done a service by that abortion. Sorry, peace and love of the of the first movie. No <laughs> peace and so love on my end. <laughs> <laughs> no peace, no love. Uh, so I think it's worth mentioning. And, and again, that that's a kind of a more long winded version of, of what I usually. But I, but also it's mentioning this movie is funny and awesome, and it feels like ninety minutes. So why does this feel like ninety minutes when it's like it's you know it's more than that? And there's movies where it's like, dude, this seems like it's five hours long. And like I, I, I will <laughs> say though, though, like maybe some of that is the COVID thing, because like this this movie might be like I feel like one hour and fifty five minutes is long for pre COVID, but not yeah. long for post COVID. You know what I mean? Like because right, right. I feel like people really, really in the last couple of years have taken their time with expanding stories out to like two and a half hours. Again. Well, in like three, three hours, yeah. it used to be like that was like oh my god, I can't believe it's that long. What is this, Fanny and Alexander? Uh, which I'm watching now, by the way. But now so uh, many people were working from home, so they had time to watch The Good Shepherd. And, and 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 fucking good fellas and all these all other the good movies, movies. So, Batman, Good Burger. <laughs> we eat this, all yeah. the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that three hour cut? Good, anyway. the bad, the ugly. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think about like the the first movie? The first movie she pitched, like oh, Good Burger. Own... I said that's great. <laughs> the first movie that she pitched as her own thing. Uh, was I, Tanya, which I didn't realize that was the first movie that her production company. Yeah, did. she was the pride of an Oscar for that one. Oof. Yeah, that That's movie a really, was really good. good. But I, I, I remember, I remember watching it at the time and being like, "Oh, Margaret Robbie is kind of like the center of this." But I didn't realize at the time that it was like something that she had pitched and worked on, and like this was her first big uh, outing with her new production company. Which her production company, uh, she decided to make a production company drunk at a premiere, like one of the premiere parties for Wolf of Wall Street. She and like uh, two of the assistant she's, directors. She's probably like, like, you know, people are going to remember me from one scene only, which I'm completely nude from the front. So I'm going to be trying to take, I'm going to try to be taken seriously and produce, act, do it all, baby. So they, they were just drunk at this like premiere party or whatever. And they were like, we should have our own, which I feel like 90% of the, we should have our own blah, blah, blah drunk Podcast. conversation. They never go <laughs> And the rest of them ends up looking exactly like this. Uh, no, I, I think that's amazing because if you think about like the over over sexualization of Margot Robbie as a actress, because she is a fantastic mm -hmm. actress, like it's, yeah, it my, basically starts with that. Yeah, right? my uncles like I can't take her seriously because ever since she did Wolf of Wall Street, I just picture her as like Sharon Stone type, and I'm like, what? I'm like, well, she, the she, same she, crap she, happened with Sharon Stone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, but Sharon I'm Stone like, doesn't have the talent. I, I mean, I uh, I'm sorry, Quick and the Dead. Hello, no, that's like, a great it, film, but like it's uh, just. It's just weird that Margot Robbie's like sure first now she's trans, but now she's too pretty to like uh, be taken yeah. seriously as an actress. So they still see her as like uh, Naomi from Wolf of Wall Street. And I'm like, guys, she's producing, she's creating good movies. Yeah, she, yeah, she had two flops. I get it, but like she's trying to really put herself Isn't out this there. Kind of like the uh, the speech from from Barbie. Like, oh, you, <laughs> yeah, you can't you do pretty, 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 yeah. Not, you know. <laughs> but like, it's just, it's just you know, I I will always defend her, like because clearly she's pro union. She she tries to you know do different things that I couldn't even imagine doing. <laughs> Release the like, Snyder kind of good. She does her own stunts. <laughs> like most of those fight scenes she does, she yeah. does like like ninety five percent of her own stunts, and I'm like, the choreography oh, in this is so freaking awesome. Like that's yes. like, the best fight scenes too in the DC. Which which EU. the crazy thing is is uh, the second unit director was the guy who did John Wick. Like yeah, that's crazy. Which yeah, explains yeah. a lot for those fight scenes. Yeah, too. truly. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, because uh, because if you look, there's like a bunch of second unit uh, directors, and he's just like one name of like fourteen. Uh, so so like uh, you know, I don't know how much he brought to it, but man, you know, it's it's 
they they did well, take their time with those those fight scenes, and I think that's great because like, he's like uh, he's you like, know, what if, what if they kill Harley yeah, Quinn's dog, and they're like, no, nah, well, we're gonna let the dog live. <laughs> yeah, yeah I was, I was, I, or hyena that, in this case. When I, yeah. When I was yeah. watching, you know, I was like, oh my god, if they kill the fucking hyena, I mean, I mean, Harley has done a lot for those dogs for for her babies. Okay, I just think it's so funny that she's like, I named him Bruce after that hunky Wayne guy, yeah, and then you great. think about Harley's holiday in Batman Animus Series, and she meets Bruce Wayne for the first time after getting out of Arkham, and she's like. There's something about that shit, and she literally covers his face, and she's like, "Oh, you're Bruce Wayne." I'm like, "You're covering you, you, you can't, you can't distinguish." But, but it's also Batman. like she's, she's so funny. She's to put it bluntly, neurodivergent. Like that's yes. the nice way we can put it, right? And so of course Very she's ADHD. not gonna. That's <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, so I mean, I think that's hilarious, and that's in character. But she also. Or, goes back to a lot of her days as a psychiatrist so she's able to right. psychoanalyze you know she she she's how so cool is that in here where like she's like tied up right yeah and and, and, like, and and she basically just eviscerates uh, uh black mask like <laughs> she voted for Bernie because she thought it'd be fun that feels like a very like I love her like by the way I do have a degree line because I feel like I always think that with Poison Ivy as well like Pamela yeah. Isley is a full ass like master's degree botanist and she's also alongside Harley one of the more sexualized comic book characters probably ever and uh and yeah and I always love that like you just like she's a doctor guys like stop being the I, that's why I would love to see a Margot Robbie produced take on Poison Ivy I want to see a care like a Poison right. Ivy that isn't thought of for male consumption and like that's I was talking about this with my friends about Love Lies Bleeding. I loved that movie and I loved going to it knowing there was no uh, apologies for present company, but like no uh, thought of like, <laughs> would a man like this? There was just no right. thought put into like, would a guy enjoy this? And I feel like that way about this too. She just wanted to make something fun and exciting for everyone. And there's not that alternative, uh, you know, motive behind it. She just gets to yeah. be. And yeah, I, I would love Poison Ivy in this universe. I'm like dying for a Gotham City Siren sequel that will never happen, but. I yeah. um I had my own like someone said this a while like before the movie came out and I agree too they're like if this movie doesn't end with her and Cass like going home because where are they where are they staying we don't know where they're staying and you yeah. see a woman from just from the back and she's like red we're home like that could have been like a good lean on to like a, a poison ivy Harley movie I was like oh god damn sure but I mean they weren't like like supporting the like this was the the uh redheaded stepchild if we're gonna talk about poison yeah. ivy might as well bring redheads yeah. into it that like mm -hmm. uh, uh like it was not considered like this was just a we have tried everything and none of it seems to be working sure get this yeah sounds great let's 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 try this let's sure, give this a one, shot get, get someone who's done one movie and it's like yeah. some chinese well, movie that no one has seen play oh. who's only more, like what one yeah. of the screenplay she done two, two? okay yeah so the the first well, no the first uh you know like kathy on that directed this this was which i still need movie. to see that i still haven't seen that yeah, movie. I wanna, anyone I on the panel seen now it? Too, now that yeah. i want to see it now too now that it. i've seen like clips from it for this but um cool. but also the uh you know <laughs> now now they actually have the um freddy configured <laughs> is on the criterion channel right now by the way which blows my mind stevie i, just get, I have to point that out uh sorry Forrest, but uh no the, the screenwriter too <laughs> that now is actually helping um james gunn actually like plot out the rest of the you know dc extended right. universe so i yeah, have faith I, I have yeah. faith unlike these snyder fanboys they're like oh my god he's gonna ruin it and i'm like no no I'm i like, mean they know yeah, what they're I'm doing like, over I'm, I'm someone that does not really like superhero movies and guardians of the galaxy was fucking awesome guardians like, of the yeah. galaxy rocks the suicide squad rocks the yeah. peacemaker show is is genius as well i, can't wait I mean for season two. It, but it, it's it's tough because like they they're good because they're like so opposite of what the DC extended universe was doing with everything else, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. and it's and people don't like they don't seem to get the message like no people like that people don't yeah. want the same crap served up to them over and over mm, again. No, I, I mean, that's, mm. that's why people you know got tired of the Marvel movies because they were pretty much doing the same thing over and over again. They were just remaking Iron Man uh, for the most and part. they they even Ant Man, which was the one that's like oh they kind of got it with Ant Man, and then they managed to. Screw that up with the third one where it's like, okay, this is like horrendous. First of all, some of the worst CGI I've seen in any movie ever. Oh my God, yeah. Like, well, just, until The Flash came out. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, I feel like DCU's biggest issue, which this is not an original thought, but it's been chasing Marvel. Like Marvel set this yeah. precedent they felt they needed I to mean, fill. That's just DC's and like, personality. Yeah, and to me, the best <laughs> right. DC movies like in the last years are, are this and the Batman. Totally opposite ends of the spectrum, but not even doing what the dceu is doing like i kind of wish dc was just 
and even Joker, which I haven't seen yet, but I know was very successful. Like they're all kind of their own standalone outside they're, the DC yeah. things, and they're the most successful. Kind right. of. Yeah, so they're like, they're they're thinking of doing a thing called Elseworld, where they, yeah. I mean, DC, <laughs> J. Andrew Elseworld. Yes, <laughs> there we go. We should <laughs> we should they DC should really be like okay, we're gonna have the mainstream, you know, DC universe. We're gonna have you know these little yeah. like offshoots like Joker, whatever, Reeves, like the Robbie. Like let them yeah. just do what they yeah. want with the like. I just feel like. I don't know why that's not easy to be like, oh, when we just let people do whatever, it's more successful. Uh, I guess I'll not ever do that. It's just so irritating. Yeah, I was thinking that the entire time. The hair yeah, kind of does go head. right down to, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh my right. gosh. Yeah. By the way, you know you know that actress is uh, Jussie Smollett's sister? Yes, yeah, also yeah. she was Michelle's best friend Denise on Full House. I was like, and she was in right. Eve's Bayou, which is brilliant. And she's like a yeah. teeny tiny child and acting her face off. And I love her. Yeah, they're supposed to do a Black Canary show with the Lovecraft Country uh, creators because she was in that, but they have Dude, the hair matches perfectly. That is crazy. I wow. I didn't know. <laughs> so in the arm, in the the arm, arm. Wow. Yeah. Yes. By the way, podcast listeners are like, what the hell are they talking about? It's a visual well, game. They're not. They're not For those who are watching. This is, this, this, yeah. But in the future, they will be. Oh, thanks for the clarification. I appreciate that. <laughs> is that how that works? Uh, yeah, like so. So again, going back to how this movie exists, they were willing to take a chance on anything, yeah. right? It was it was like, okay, yeah, let's give it a shot. How much money? Sure, okay, fine. And I like how I like how their version of uh, you know like uh, trying anything is just why don't we try like uh, getting a woman director in there? Yeah, yeah. Why don't we make a good movie? Let's so let a broad it. do it. Give it to a broad. Make it a movie about broads, <laughs> and they're fighting. And and and, and, and so many boys were time. like, "No way!" And I'm like, "The amount of time." I, I, I guess I'm just built different because I was like, "Yeah, yeah you're, you're let's you, go. here's the thing. Real <laughs> men like Harley Quinn. So all you Snyder fan boys, you little teenage boys, real men yeah. like the female leads in the DC. Just saying. And also, That's how guys, you get I mean, like, also, and also guys that just got out of jail and have like a domestic <laughs> violence charge, but oh. but not but not not one season. Of this movie. <laughs> but they only like the David Ayer movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, now the uh, the uh, what's nice too is that. Um, um, you, you had uh, uh, that that was very, uh, you know, a uh, big nod to the uh, to the Jimmy Palmiotti uh, Banda Connor stuff, which I, I uh, think is probably some of the best um, Harley Quinn comics uh, out there. And it's nice to see like it actually get representation like, like the outfits from the movie. Some of them came directly from Amanda Connor's from designs, room. which is which is great. Yeah, which is th the look of this we, movie is incredible. I've them before they're very nice. Uh, I, like I like say. the big like the production design. Like think about like the Funhouse fight, right? Oh like, my god! That, yes. Like how could first of all, it, it's an amazing choreographed scene, but just like the look of everything that's happening and the fact you know she changes her roller skates somehow and then it's it's noticed by one of the characters. Like when did she have time to change? You know, <laughs> like bet, that's. I bet they were like, hey, before we get like an error of continuity on like IMDb, let's address the issue. Real right. Quick. <laughs> I, I don't have the roller skates, but I got, you know, I got the boots. Yeah. But I love it because it totally fit the logic. Oh, nice. Very nice. Yeah. I, it fit the logic of the scene and, it, it, and that, that crazy production design. It's so like all the colors are so bright and like yes. jarring and yeah. it's great. It's almost a throwback to the old Adam West Batman to a certain degree, right? Yeah, and, 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 which is yeah. awesome. Some people were like, obviously people were like, it needs more Snyder. And I'm like, no, this is Harley's world. <laughs> okay, Zack Snyder so, using one of your alts. <laughs> things are gritty, but yet colorful at the same time. So the color palette of this movie is pretty fantastic. And the fact that this didn't get any like production or costume design uh, nominations at anything, really, you know, it's kind of upsetting because someone did a, um, a concept art of the old school Harley look with these overalls where it's red and black, which is what right. Forrest did that photo of. So you now they, now you can actually get people to make that specific cosplay because a lot of people are like, well, I want to, you know, the gold is cute and all, but I like the black and red overall with this. And so was this the Nomad Land year? I feel like it was the Nomad Land year, right? I, I think, think so. Right. Yeah. What what was the big power player for production? I'm gonna look this up in real time. While I'm talking. I think it was. Yeah. Um, so production design, Mank. I mean, <laughs> okay, like I, we love fine. we love our grays. Also, we too, I like gays. the fact that Harley Quinn basically <laughs> set a no. cab. I love her fun gun. Yes, the fun gun's amazing. Eggs. 
Big and with chairs, confetti, Renee, glitter. an only good cop is one that quits. Like, let's go, Renee, my queen. Yeah. I do love, I do love Rosie Perez and as Renee. She's so good I at this. Have, I don't think yes. that that role would have worked with anybody besides Rosie Perez. No, yeah. like, she's so like she's and she's classic at it. I, I, um, she's like in a Pineapple Express. She's also like the well, she's the opposite of this cop, but she's like the dirty cop. That uh, mm. that, that gets one over on fucking. Um, I haven't seen that in so long. Oh really? She's she's yeah. like the cop that uh, she's she's sitting in the hole and they like run over her. With the, oh okay with the, okay yeah. oh right okay. Sure, also, sure, sure, sure. no offense, but this movie also portrays like every man in this maybe except for Victor's ass a little bit as like incompetent, like the <laughs> cops overlooking you know you know Renee not you know they're just ignoring her like yeah whatever he's a rich. It's almost as if he that. These cops were all were already bought out by Roman yeah. Sionis by the fact they're like, yeah, whatever. It's not drugs. Well, they say it in there. They say his his name, you know, the Sionis is on every the yeah. Sionis name is on the museums and the schools. It's like you don't want to go after you know that kind of person. And I, I like the characterization of like her boss is like the guy that stole her big case from her. Like yeah. he, the the one thing that he's and been Allie able Wong to do is, is take credit over X. her because yeah. she's kind of she's kind of like. Not I'm I'm not not like unhinged, but she's one of those detectives that's so in it, kind of that like uh kind of everything else goes by the wayside, right? Like so she's not really paying attention to like you know press and like taking credit. He's he's the one guy that's like, oh, I can just say I did this, and then everyone will just clap. Yeah, you know, like, which is what he did at the end of the movie too. He doesn't. So, <laughs> so I was so obsessed with finding out why it wasn't nominated for uh, production design, cinematography, and costume design. By the way, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom was what would make up and costume design that year, mm -hmm. uh, oh, whoa. which is like, okay, I guess that was a movie that happened, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but- I remember if that's, I think that's one of the ones I saw that year. But these, I had f remembered the fun house scene, cause I did yeah. not forget like the, the, how awesome that is, but I had somehow totally forgotten the the a cab uh fun gun uh rampage riot uh, at, at, at the, the police station. And remember when this came out too, yeah. Right. That's yeah. like, first of all, it's not like that's a new thing. Uh, yeah. The, 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 but, what the cops are, but, but like, I, I she remember voted for Bernie. She voted for Bernie. <laughs> she voted for her fellow Brooklyn man. Like, you know, what I'm saying like, she's a, she's a leftist. And they even pointed that out in, in the suicide school where she's like, you know, where the guy's like, you know, you are very anti American. We love that value. She's like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, partner, I, like, it's, oh, oh, go ahead. I can't say no. Please, well, my ahead. partner pointed out, she's like, I wonder if, like they feel more comfortable having her express these because she's a villain technically. So like, you know, she's not Steve right. Rogers walking in of her and being like, <laughs> I hate cops, by the way. Like it makes sense if Harley does because she's a villain, even though there's Friendly. people with leftist politics who would be like, yeah, go girl. Like I she's know. a loose cannon because she's yeah. a little off, right? You I know? love how distinct all the fights and even action sequences are. Like they all feel so unique and interesting. Like the yeah. even the chase through the market that has a bunch of fun visual gags in it. That yeah. the, there's like two parts to the, you know, the cop showdown. There's the initial one where it's fabulous and slow-mo and crazy but then there's that great rain scene the rain yeah. like yeah. they're all and you can see that it is margot doing all these stunts and then it goes into the back room and then it goes and then the fun house you have like so many different sets in just one fun house so everyone's having a different fight on a different like, it's all level. happening like I, interconnected yeah. like it's all it's joined funny. yeah i they're think so it's unique. funny yeah yeah I think it's funny when the guys are shooting at, you know, Cass and Harley, and they're like, keep the kid alive. I'm like, then why are you shooting at her? Again, <laughs> all the men in the movie are incompetent. And then, yeah, and we, call, we call that doing the Israel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, no, but like it's there's the lot. It's very smartly done with what they have. Right. That, that's yeah. the thing I like the that I like the best about it. And, and you get you get hold on. Uh, you, you, you get uh, in a situation where you see her get over her head too because she's not really the best at doing this she's just running yeah. around like half, half half the time without a plan she's domino she she's like the dc's domino she just has the power of luck at this point that's what i think. right <laughs> well there's such cool acts like when when she after they escape from the um uh from from the the cop place what is it what do you call a cop place like the, the, uh, the, 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 the precinct the evidence, room? <laughs> the evidence room? cop shop <laughs> Cop place coming this fall on uh, uh, Paramount it's, Plus. It's, it's called Dunkin' Donuts around here. Is that the, uh, is that, is that the spin off from the good place? <laughs> right, it's the cop place. Exactly. It's a, well, it's, it's a, it's it was a, it was a weird creative decision, but they decided to go with it. No, but you see that, like, like you see, like the person chaser, and and, and I was like, I was like, wow, the chick is a Carl looking motherfucker. Exactly. Where 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 it's like, because you you look, you're like. 
Huh. And then it's like, yeah, that's what these, like, you see, like, her, like, dossiers, right? Her internal dossiers of, like, and all, like, the type of grievances and stuff. Like, that's done so well. And it's so smart. And it's so, like, funny because when you're reading that, because the first thing, when I saw it the first time, I was like, wow, that woman kind of looks like, and then it's, I was like, ah, amazing. So, like, (laughs) I, 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 I like, I like the fact that, like, it's kind of what you said about, you know, Harley Quinn as a character being a little bit like neurodivergent. Like she has not kept tabs on what she's done to who, right? Like there's just right, so, at all. <laughs> so by by just getting drunk and doing the cathartic thing rather than the smart thing and just kind of blowing up the chemical plant and showing everybody like, oh, like I'm single now, like you know, like, and I like the she just updated her Facebook stat or her relationship stat because right. it's like such a good corny cop line. But I like that the yeah. entire uh, thing is like she doesn't have a plan from the beginning because she doesn't even know who's out to get her, and it's like, oh, everybody, like everybody yeah. does not like you, like you have exactly. you have wronged every. Everybody in Gotham over this last, you know, amount it's of just time. No one would dare. And, and you know what's so like I, I understand the argument where a lot of people are like, well, there should have been a Joker Harley movie to set this up, even though the narration no. in the beginning worked. I'm like, no, we don't need it. No. She, we, she we, we, illustrated what happened, like their history and all that stuff. And, and we are wondering I, why that house. <laughs> yeah. We got, want, yeah. First of all, we, then we'd have to see more of Jared Leto. So you see yeah. the problem. I mean, we can yeah. get Bill Skarsgård now since the crow. <laughs> but it's like it's like every time a new Spider-Man just has to redo the story uh, we all already know that someone dies and with great power comes great. We all have to see it. And like, and like there's, I think, versions of them that are better than others. Like, I'm a sucker for the Raimi films. I do love those. Like, of yeah, course, yeah. I like that version. But like... I got so sad. Also, as a kid we know when it. Ben died in the Sam Raimi version. I was like, oh, and it's Ben. It's like Bruce Wayne too. Like, how many times do we need to see that? Like, we we His come to a Batman movie killed. knowing they got shot in the alley and the pearls fell yeah. on the ground and Joe Cool ran away. Like, I think it's like, yeah, same. Well, you don't need a Joker Harley movie. Yeah, as much as I love like their relationship is like. As much as I love David Muzicelli, I do not need to see his artwork redone again on the big screen. Uh, same thing with Steve Ditko. Um, we, ta- mm-hmm. we talked about that in, I can't remember what it was, but we talked about how like so many Spider-Man movies, like he's always in high school. Like he wasn't in high school that long in the comics, man. No, like about a like, year. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Like 1963. <laughs> yeah. And, and <laughs> well, the co- you know, I think like, everyone's like, still in the college. cop place. Huh? Okay, the cop place. Yeah, <laughs> Another no, thing I like though in the beginning with Harley. Well, well hold on, Christina, if you, if you don't mind, just just, yeah. just for a moment, I think we should, we should explore that. Uh, we, should, we should explore that a little bit that like, I think it's a weaker movie if you show the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's against the point of the whole movie. Because the whole thing is. It was an accident that they didn't show the Joker because Jared, Le- like, they did invite Jared Leto to be kind of. Yeah. To do the Joker thing, and then he was like, "Oh, I'm I'm busy. I'm I'm methoding somewhere else now. I'm <laughs> yeah, bothering no, someone else." They did else. have a stand-in. They did have a stand-in. Yeah, stand-in like, from the Joker back. Throwing out his who did a better uh, job, stuff. no less. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you know, but, but but like okay. it's, it's so important. It's not important. Yeah, it's yeah. Not that, that that doesn't even warrant a snap correction. That that's it's literally just if you show the Joker as a recognized figure, like in this movie, it is against the point of the movie. Because the point yeah. of the movie is that, like, well, his presence is felt even when, he, when he's not there, and that, like, obviously, uh, she has to deal with a reconfigured world where, yeah. like it or not, like the reputation of like this psychopath <laughs> that, that is is something that has protected her and made a lot of people sort of back off, and then so that's that's why suddenly everyone's out to get her, and, yeah. and so like. But it doesn't, it isn't because like it's like centering the Joker on that would be the worst possible thing you could do. Cause the whole yeah. point is that he's not there. So he well, shouldn't be like, there. Like I love that beginning like, uh, though. She changes up the tattoo. She cuts her hair. She's picking out. Cups. She gets, she gets Brucey. Like it's a whole thing. Right. It, it, By the way, great hyena work in here. Best hyena yes. in, in a movie I've love seen. Him. It's weird. It's weird yeah. to like bring this up as like an example of what this kind of is. <laughs> But like I think about this sometimes with like Russia and like Putin. Like there's there's a thing about like whether like whether every single person in the world, right, is trying to drain the money from you, like you know, like oligarchs or whatever. You have all these different crime bosses all throughout this country that are trying to like drain the fucking money from you. Or you have one guy that offers you protection and like stability, yeah, but right. he's the biggest fucking scumbag in the world. And mm-hmm. it's like, which one of those do you want to take? And in this, they remove her kind of giant scumbag and they're like, All right, well, now everybody <laughs> wants everybody's trying to be like a blood sucker pretty much in this situation. Like right. go for it. Like it's, it's a balkanized threat. You had like one thing before and now there's like twenty. No, and, yeah. and, and 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 it's again, it's better. It's better as a part of a narrative, like in the background, because because again, the, yeah. the point is like, what is she doing with her life now? And like, you you kind of see it. It's in that really long involved title that somebody decided to. By the way, sentence long movie titles are 
I'm fine with it. But uh, well, they added, they added that. It, they added it's that a bold after. aesthetic decision, is what I was going to well, say. Well, they added. They it was called Just Birds of Prey originally, and then people didn't go and see it in the first couple weeks, and then so they're like, "Oh, we need like a recognized character." So yeah. they added the subtitle two weeks after the initial release of the movie when. Or then COVID most- happened and shut down. Like, I think it is so weird because like the Bob Marley movie also just had this where it was originally One Love and then in production they changed it to like Bob Marley One Love. Everyone and I was like, one love by Bob yeah, Marley, I was like, who though? needs that? You see the trailer, yeah. you know it's Bob Marley. Y'all, the okay. other day I was sitting in Love Lies Bleeding, the trailer for the new Amy Winehouse oh. uh, trailer oh. played. Probably one of the most recognizable singers. Sure. How do you not know who that is? Man behind me after <laughs> the trailer ended turned to his daughter and said, you know who that was? And mm-hmm. I was like, how do you, how are you a grown man? Why are like, you parents not but, teaching your kids about <laughs> good music? But that, well, he's like an older guy. He was a daughter of like an 18 year old. And, but I thought like maybe the like wide public does need that. Maybe they need to change it to Amy Winehouse colon back to black. So people know like maybe- Amy Winehouse, Amy Winehouse, one love. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So yeah, like, well, it makes sense to me that they felt they had to add that they had to add Harley Quinn to the title. Yeah. It makes sense yeah. to me that they felt like they needed to appeal to certain people. So, Another- so, so as as an artist, like I I I find that kind of mindset of like, oh, let's cater to the lowest common denominator, like people that like, how do you get, how do you dress yourself in the morning? That 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 kind of person. I find that repulsive, but I get it when you have, they're trying to make a major multinational, uh, you know, hit on your hands. You need to do whatever you can to whatever dumb thing. And we've talked in the past about movies that are great that have like are misleading or bad titles. Sorcerer, Edge of Tomorrow. These are these are movies where it's like, again, Freakin' should have known better, man. Like, you should, why did you? First of all, this is called Wages of Fear because that's there already yeah, was the, a movie. He was he was kind of doing the Harley Quinn subtitle because he was trying to hint kind of like I don't know, like I really they were trying to hint a little bit that this is gonna be like a sequel to The Exorcist. Well, exactly. And so then it's an oh, why did everyone think it was supernatural? I wonder why. You know, I wonder why people would think that. Because you called a sorcerer nimnal. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we anyway, think? R.I.P. Billy Freakin. Thank you. So <laughs> you know, one you know what someone pointed out that the Joker like animation, like her picture where she's you know like thrown out. It kind of looks like Caesar Romero's um Joker. Yeah. It, uh, everyone was like, the, "Oh, it looks uh, just like Jared Leto." The... Like if it was if it was Jared Leto Joker, there'd be a there'd yeah, be a damage tattoo on his yeah, head. Look, it looked yeah, it looked like Machine Gun Kelly. Color. Yeah, yeah, it I, was I like thought it looked more like the Mark Joker. Hamill, the Mark Hamill Joker. It, it, yeah. it actually yeah. was taken from the 1960s cartoon series. Uh, that that particular Joker. Oh. So, mm. you know, it was a nice little poll right. there. I love that um, Cassandra had no idea who the Joker was. Like that goes to show, like she's got priorities. <laughs> well, and I, I the, she, the she would be one of the people that needed that title. Apparently, I don't. <laughs> that kind of adds to like the the whole thing about like I think this movie does a really good job expanding the world of like Gotham into yeah. being like a place that isn't just like oh you know like there's batman and, and joker. you know the joker and then there's fucking like paint like i don't like there's too many number one there's, there's daylight fucking... in gotham in this movie like, like i've never seen that before like, yeah. that. Yeah. like why are you mad i mean d- d- gotham is daylight why are we mad about that yeah. now well there's, there's just, literally there's, yeah it, 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 it would be really funny though like daylight gotham everything's kind of like i don't know there's like some crazy chases and stuff but like it's not anything too crazy and then the second is nighttime everyone's like get inside get inside get inside <laughs> <laughs> i feel bad though I mean, I'm, I'm so glad when I, I actually, I gotta be honest with you guys. When she, when that egg sandwich went on the, on the street, I did cry. I was like, God, man, I feel it. I know it. Yeah, that, okay? was, that was the, I, I was a little bit like, uh, just as someone that like, I don't know, isn't like really into this kind of stuff. Like, I, what oh, really? It, no, well, yeah, what? Please really? say it 17 more times. Thank you. What sold it for me? In the, <laughs> well, I think it's an the interesting back I haven't heard it yet. It's an inter- I, like I liked the movie, and I like I want to talk from a perspective of someone that isn't you uh-huh. know uh-huh. a big superhero guy. Like what sold it for me was the bacon, egg, and cheese thing, because yeah. I was like, oh, that's something I relate to it. <laughs> you first, you're like, that looks delicious. Yeah, I she's well, like, I don't that, know what this that, that me brought me into hand. it, and then from then on, I was kind of sold on it. Like I like I like it was a really that good went viral bacon, egg, during cheese. COVID. So many people are like, you know what? I made some bread. Let's make a homemade egg and cheese sandwich. They're never as good. They're never as good as the ones you get from like either like a, a really like greasy a bodega, bodega or, or yeah, or like yeah, or like your your local deli. But well, uh, do, you, do you not remember the bodega discussions after this movie came out? Like like there were um, like podcasts dedicated to discussing bodega sandwiches because of this film. Yeah. Not, yeah. A lot of people were trying to they recreate like, the actual sandwich too. I remember that. I'm like, yeah. But there's also like at the same time. Like, <laughs> there's nothing to it, guys. Just yeah, listen, guy missed all of this, Andy. 
Okay. <laughs> there was Fair like there was, at the same time there was like Jesus and Mara was on and they kept like yeah I know the Bodega Boys but yeah yeah that yeah mm-hmm. that's, but that's <laughs> people were yeah. talking about Bodegas for a little while they have, they have those Bodega cat twitters they're like oh look there's a cat and he's sitting on the eggs that's how you know it's a good one <laughs> <laughs> if you get the if it gets shed upon yes yeah uh, okay that's or or I mean you know Harley Quinn said the Armenian arm hair thing I mean you know that's a <laughs> right that's right another right. <laughs> Well, I love how there are people who do love Harley. Well, at first, like, you know, like Doc, who obviously sold her out. Fuck Doc. We hate Doc here now. <laughs> I, I like that he's, as, as like, a as like a, a Maoist adjacent kind of person, ideologically, I like that she was sold out by her Taiwanese landlord. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm from Taiwan and I'm a landlord. Yeah, Mao was right about these, this kind of guy. Like... <laughs> Also, and, and, okay, so can we talk about the diamond situation? Because it's kind of like, oh, the, the scene in the in the grocery store is incredible. I'm glad it was in the intro. Yeah, yeah, accidentally. I'm like, no, she looks at it and just swallows it because she has nowhere else to put it. And I'm like, oh, that thing's huge. I can't, I can't even swallow my trazodone pills that are like 150 milligrams. I gotta split them in half. She could swallow that rock Whew. with no water. Well, I mean, I think, I think sometimes if you're in a, you know. A scary situation like that, you know, your your body does impressive things. Yeah, yeah. Like well, if you're, if the, you're uh, young, yeah. The, the car off their baby. Yeah. Right. Just open that also, throat right up. I also <laughs> like that black canary. Like, I kept the diamond her. in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the emperor? <laughs> that would be a very different movie. <laughs> I kept the spice in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yeah, Christopher Walken will be playing Cassandra Kane in the next version of that. Yeah, uh, I, 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 would, I would watch that. I would, this, this, this movie's the Snyder all, cut. This movie's exactly that. the same, except Christopher Walken is Cassandra Kane. <laughs> <laughs> hey. they're, like, they're, like, they're like, anyone see that little girl? <laughs> she's, she's Fun running, she's fact. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but Hugh McGregor had an affair with Mary Elizabeth Winstead while they were doing Fargo and this film. Excusable. Yeah, they're, they're, they're married. married. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're married. married. They're married for a while. Yeah, uh, I'm like, you know, and he, he's like, oh, I'm so I'm like, you know, I'm like, you know, he talked about his wife for 20 years for a long time. And I'm thinking to myself, maybe there's a chance for me and Killian Murphy then. I don't know. <laughs> Even if I had a wife so for 20 years, I would, as, as I would also leave my wife for if I had a wife yeah. for. for, for and that's. And she's so like, OK, like Hundreds <laughs> is so like socially awkward. Like you could tell she just lived in Sicily and was raised by these two Italians like. Well, it's so, a great. So, so I'm glad. First of all, that, that we at the hour mark we finally invoke Huntress and Mary Elizabeth Winstead because she's really yes. fantastic in this, and I love that. Like, it can be such a serious, screwed up, trauma induced story for her. I don't but, have rage, but then, but then there's also like, like every, everyone just the crossbow killer. You're the crossbow killer. You're the crossbow. She's like, no, Huntress. Like, what? If, like, like that's a recurring. But it really works because it's the kind of thing where it's like, oh yeah, you're not like you're you're a badass. You have a badass name, but you're not really that good at the branding part of it. And people just have. And so that's hilarious because like, you know who I am. <laughs> the crossbow killer yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, it's it's and it's so and like when she gets she gets all pissed off about like you know what am i 12 bow and arrow like, <laughs> she's so, like, like that's that's great that's amazing and i'm blown away that uh she's so awesome she's fantastic in, in uh, that season of fargo as well she, yeah. i think she's such a great actress and it, it's it's surprising to me that she doesn't have a bigger career if i was uh ewan mcgregor i would have said oh I, it's not me too it's my brother you know, oh yeah, because that season of Fargo, they were twins. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so what is? Yeah. I think he won like a Golden Globe or Emmy for that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He, and, he, and the Fargo show, it. like people keep hooking up too, because uh, di- didn't um uh oh, what's her name? Uh, well, yeah, Kirsten, people are hooking Kirsten up on Fargo. Dunst, no, Holly's doing some uh, crazy shit over there. Yeah, they they had Kirsten Dunst and uh yeah uh, yeah, yeah it's Kirsten Dunst. But they, they were already married, I think, when they did Fargo. I thought they right? met on the show. Oh, they might have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like like that show makes people horny. Uh, I don't know what. It is. <laughs> <laughs> horny for hold on, Christina Mackenzie, as 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 the as the as the lesbian on the panel, can you please <laughs> opine about uh, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead? Because I think we'd be remiss not to not to explore Whenever that further. I on, on Escape Hatch, formerly known as Doompot, they also call me like the lesbian. <laughs> that's, 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 that's my clear my qualities here. To, to be fair, that is only one of your qualities, and we have many uh, other lesbians yeah, yeah. that are part of our show. But anyway, I just but, um, be funny. 
yeah no i just i, I wrote i've been on the mary elizabeth transit sky high oh my god incredible movie one of my favorites ever and she plays you know like the most beautiful girl the protagonist's ever seen and you fall completely in love with her and then there's yeah. a twist with her at the end that's great but she's yeah she's amazing i love how uh while I wish there were a, like a, there was a little bit more death, I think it's more of a time constraint in terms of right. deepening the characters that are outside of Harley. That's why I'm like I want another movie so I can continue to like lean into this. But I do love that all of them have like a a thing they're kind of overcoming and a thing of their past. Like Renee is overcoming an al- alcoholism and she has this ex, and then like Huntress has this trauma from her childhood. She does not overcome and alcoholism. She's yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's drunk with drugs. She, and, she and also, um, that's her. That's literally her superhero origin. She has her, comics. Yeah, <laughs> she has her mission. But then Canary, you know, you get this line about her mother died, and she was Luckily, the original Black voice. Canary, and yeah, and then like then she's also trying to overcome this sort of like weird enslavement almost that she has with Sionis. And so I like that yeah. they each kind of have like a, a a bad thing that happened to them and a thing they're doing. And so they feel just as important as Harley. While they're not as like fleshed out as Harley, I still feel like I care about them because I, I see the journeys they're all taking individually and how it all kind of, they all come together in the end because of it. Yeah. yeah no. do a good job with uh, the Renee Montoya character also and like having Ali Wong as her ex. Yeah. And- I, I like that. Like I like that they they don't lean too too hard into it. They're just like, oh, this is her ex, and then they kind of you know they hmm. they bring that yeah. up as as a thing. Like it's not like a you, do, you don't need a Disney Plus prestige TV series about that. Honestly, That's fine. We got it. I, one. I feel like Mar- Marvel would have probably given you that. Like Marvel <laughs> right. would be like, oh look, two gay people. Uh, we're 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 progressive here at Marvel. Like this movie kind of is just so organic, and you're like, yeah, this is like a an older detective with fucking alcoholism that like probably most detectives but like this one's one that really cares about her job and like loses out because of it classic yeah. type classic if, rosie perez moment like you know, I don't know if this movie had come out like this year oh my god this movie's so well black canary's actually black wait there was a hispanic lesbian <laughs> with an asian woman oh my yeah, god yeah. like seriously i was surprised no one I, <laughs> why, can't surprised. We, why can't we have a white canary yeah, seriously. Because <laughs> it, it, Which, in the comics, she's a blonde a white and white canary, or whatever. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm like, if, I'm just thinking, I'm like, you know, this movie is a right winger's nightmare. And the fact that no one really bitched has bitched about like those aspects of of the movie, I'm like, it really goes to show that this movie was was perfect. For Do you want to go post out. about it on Truth Social and maybe see if you can get get them all <laughs> yeah, up? There you go. <laughs> but the, I'm sure the, there was the, that kind of. Uh, Feeling. it probably wasn't as yeah. loud right i feel like we're way more online than we were four years ago even yeah but, yeah and yeah, i was generally oh because like also harley you know it's it's very slight but they did the kind of like harley's bye in the opening with mm-hmm. like right. one of her exes being a girl i remember which kind of looked like on, poison ivy when i was on gay twitter that was all the rage was like we got her <laughs> she's i mean she's been queer in the comics for a while but we were all yeah. like yes um and then i also think you know i i, I this probably could be controversial but i was reading online about it that like because people were mad about it at the time. I don't know. I think that Zaz and Sionis are very queer coded. This like oh, yeah. obsession. Zaz, it's special. very homoerotic. And I was looking up some interview where they got they asked Messina and McGregor, and they both were like, kinda, yeah, right. And then yeah. but then right. people were like mad. People were like, How dare you? And I'm like, look. The, there's so many other characters that feel queer like harley and renee and and, and how you know that like i don't care if the villains are also queer cut like i don't think it's an issue for me when like the whole movie feels very queer and well, they just yeah. that I, I she is ass. oh my god it's that such guy a fun, i think it's a funny so... homoeroticism between the two of them yeah like they're, they're McGregor gives all, like bisexual energy in that movie in like a classic like almost noir kind of way where you have like uh one guy yeah. and then his like sidekick and his sidekick is clearly a little bit more into it than he is because <laughs> Because his the, male like, companion, yeah, yeah. Is it, you know, yeah. like it, it's like almost like a, a really Peter Laurie friend. kind of vibe, yeah, and it's like exactly. you know, like that that kind of sidekick is clearly more into it because the other guys, not because the other guy is less like queer, but because the other guy is just so into himself that it's like, yeah. oh, I'm gonna be theatrical. The other guy's like, he I'm here to, to you know, yeah. Well, and it's like oh. rope, like we talked about in rope with Matt Bomb, right? Like yeah. that yeah. kind of thing. It's where also, <laughs> it's also kind of interesting how how Sionis views, um, you know, Black Canary as well. It's like he has like a my little bird like he has it and of course victor's like all jealous of that and i'm like trust me i don't really think it's anything <laughs> yeah, sexual yeah. but like whatever <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he just wants he, someone else to worship him a woman, yeah i think perhaps. it's a it's a power thing because even in the other scene yeah. that i think it's probably the most upsetting scene in the movie is when he makes that woman strip that oh god oh, like, it's a very like that one. Yeah. real scene and it, f- it feels almost tonally off from the rest of the film because it feels very scary for a moment in a way that yeah. doesn't really for the whole for i think i think it's good too 
like, like shows you need to be scared of, of those yeah. villains because it like it's you fucking scared, Victor yeah. Zaz, who's like one of the a, most a killer yes, <laughs> serial killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like like you know, yes, and I love. Don't get me wrong, I have a great love for Victor Zaz, especially uh, his portrayal in Gotham. Uh, like uh, that you know, one of my favorite characters from that show. Yeah, but it's, it's 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 that one. I forget the actor's name, but it's that one. Fellow. Yeah, that he's, he's great. He's that guy's great. He's, he's he's ace is that kid. Yeah, he, he's uh, <laughs> now Metamorpho in the uh, in the James Gunn movies, uh, right. the upcoming Superman film. So I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, anyways, that's no um, no uh, no ho Hank from uh, Barry. There we go. Yeah. That, that uh, but, but yeah, he he's um uh you know and he's one of the scariest characters. He's like he's like Hannibal Lecter of Batman comics. Yeah, and, and he just yeah. likes killing people. You he don't kill anyone. Yeah, and, Men, and the Black children. Mask is also pretty uh pretty intimidating too. Uh, you know, yeah. running around with that skull mask and stuff. So so like you know to, to kind of yeah, mask, take them you know? down <laughs> a couple notches like they did to kind of like you know, uh, make them fit the tone of the film. They did need to actually re uh, reinforce that. Like, no, these are scary, it's people. scary people, right? Yeah. Th there's yeah. a reason why everyone's scared of, and look, uh, I guess it's time to talk about Ian McGregor's performance here. Cause he is again, terrifying in that scene, but yeah. otherwise hamming it up, but in a good way, like in a way oh, that yeah. like yeah. wouldn't yeah, necessarily be outside the realm of fitting in with Burton's Batman or even like the Adam West series to yeah. it'd be understated there. But like, <laughs> he's clearly, first of all, he's good at it and he's yeah. loving doing it. And that makes him a great uh, villain on screen. Ew. He's hamming it up almost in like Ew, a, I love a, it. Like a yeah. cokehead way. Where like, yeah. somebody, right. where someone's I, really, really, like, their energy is all over the place, but you can tell that it can turn in a second. Yeah, it can go You're dark, like, like yeah. Yeah. really like, I, easy. I, 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 <laughs> like, that's actually, no, the scare, one of the scary scene in the beginning is when he gets that, the Keos family, he has them upside down. He's like, oh, we'll yeah. let the, we'll let the daughter go. And then she's like, thank you. And he's like, that stop bubble? Never mind. Cut it off. Like, I'm like, yeah. I think I think what's interesting to me is like yeah like those scenes where he feels like especially scared because he is so goofy and funny and yeah. to me and I think it disarms you and you yeah you forget he's a threat and then the scene yeah. again like yeah he cuts someone's face off he he makes that woman <laughs> strip that turn as an actor that he makes when he calls Harley a moron like the poison dripping from his lips when he says that it just it's just like I don't know it just to me illustrates how easy misogyny can be like like you you think you're disarmed by this goofy fun guy but it doesn't take long for him to switch into that mode that is so easy for men like him to access and so like and like i feel like that's you know obviously one of the villains of the movie i think it's misogyny and the film is actually fighting against that and like that's why these men are the way they are in this movie but how do yeah. they do that with no horses <laughs> <laughs> Like I, I there it I is, everybody. Andy World. I one of the a big round of applause. Works really well with that is that all of the grievances are like very slight things, right? Like the oh, yeah. espresso actually, machine, not espresso, like calling like espresso the, machine. But I voted for Bernie. That used to be my raid like, uh, command. You, you, can, you can tell that he calls it espresso. Like that's his. <laughs> like, yeah. right. it's, you can but, you can like, really hear the fingers the, in it. You know, all of the uh, all of the fucking grievances are just like. Really I think one of them things. was like she forgot to flush the toilet one time because I was like reading through them and I'm like, whoa, this is a long list of like the most minor inconveniences ever. It's so. Funny. Also, too, the scene where she she claims she can't sing, but she did that Diamonds Are Girls Best Friend montage, which you McGregor dances in it too, and he was in Moulin Rouge. <laughs> Moulin Rouge. That yeah. song. <laughs> I was like, man, yeah. that song's never leaving him, huh? <laughs> so this is yeah. really a movie. It's weird that uh, that happens twice. Yeah. This yes. is really a, a, a movie that's really made for you, huh, Christina? Oh yeah. <laughs> this it really she, again. She, she she really was like, I'm gonna give this girl a choker. I I I think his his performance in this is another keystone to the movie. And, and again, for all the reasons Mackenzie that you articulated, and and that like you know he can at the snap of a finger, like suddenly like, oh no, this dude's terrifying. Yeah, especially uh, in that interrogation scene too with, with Harley. Sure, we don't need to, we can, I, we can outline all the individual scenes if you want, but I'm just talking generally that that if we, like, I, I think like any, and I guess we can ostensibly call it an anti-hero, sure, story, that uh, he, heroes and villains, right? Any, any protagonist is only as good as their antagonist. So if the antagonist is good and the pro and the protagonist is good, then you got something. And there is nuances and shades and shades of gray to a lot of things, but ultimately it's like, no, this guy's a psychopath. This guy is like a like a the baddest of bad dudes that also happens to be charming in the way that that you know uh, psychopaths sometimes can be. And it's I think it's so well done 
And he's really good at it. And I kind of wish like, there was more times that he would get to open up like that. Yeah, because it's again, like again, that's why I think there should be like a little mini series, maybe one season of like Roma Sinos trying to build his empire after getting kicked out of jail. Oh, like how they're gonna do with the uh, the penguin mm. uh, with um, yeah uh, uh, Colin Farrell. Because I mean, which more... I'll totally watch that. He's, yeah, I, he's like, this is my favorite part of that. There's more than just the Joker and the penguin. Like like you you can really build off of these characters. From Wasn't that the whole idea with Gotham? Like... I actually have never seen it, but isn't that the whole idea behind? Yeah, Gotham? yeah. Gotham's like a prequel to it. It's like young Bruce Wayne just saw his parents get killed. Uh -huh. Uh, Lieutenant Gordon is kind of watching out for him. Right. Uh, and, and it's like you start seeing all the building blocks that, that let, lead him to becoming Batman. So, um, uh, and right. they got all like the a road too. version of all, all the villains, like, like, uh, mm -hmm. they, you know, got Scarecrow's dad, uh, who's like, you know, torturing and gassing his son. And, and, you know, you can see where like all these people, um, uh, freaking, uh, what's her name? Um, Tank Girl, uh, Lori Petty shows up and, and oh, plays wow. a proto Harley Quinn. Like, like, Dodo she she kind of she kind of tank girl kind of was the proto Harley Quinn. Yeah, she, about it. Lori Petty she voiced um the electric who's that the electrical girl. Uh, Naomi yeah, Watts also in Tank Girl as uh, as uh, uh, was it Jet Girl was the, was the yes. character's name right Jet Girl. I haven't seen it. and uh, Ice T as one of the kangaroos. I remember that yes. as well. That that's a uh, Tank Girl everybody uh, coming yes, up Malcolm next McDowell week. Malcolm McDowell was the villain. I yeah. saw the first couple of seasons of Gotham like a while ago. Like when there was just nothing else to watch on Netflix for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> and I what like, a ringing endorsement <laughs> no, I mean, it, was, it, was good. it felt it felt kind of like the thing that they tried to do though with like afterwards with like riverdale you know what i mean like where it's like the oh. adult like in, cw adult baby of like uh you right. know like like classic stories but like in the kind of like a darker mode I, i'm not gonna tell you it's good but it's fun like like if you like batman if you like the comics this is something you'd enjoy and, and if you don't then don't watch it they, they were kind of, they were kind of annoying about um they kept being like oh is the joker gonna show up oh is this guy the joker yeah no, this guy is yeah the no the, yeah oh, that, that was a little like... much also the kid who played bruce wayne like um as an actor that first season he was terrible like like uh, almost <laughs> like yeah and, and like as he got older he like kind of matured and actually as an actor kind of grew and he was just fine at the end, I mean, I'm not going to say he was right. any good, but like <laughs> he'd improved. Like the weakest point of the whole show is a is for effort, point. kid. You know, I know, yeah. It was, <laughs> honestly, like, like that's the toughest role right there. But like, you know, you have the guy playing Victor's ass, just stealing every single scene. You have uh, sure. Jill Gomez shows up for a couple episodes, and she's always great. And uh, anyway. but, like, subscribe yeah. to Andy's podcast here, all about this. Uh, yeah. Mackenzie, what, how do you feel about the whole extended universe of like the like the Gotham world? Do you think Birds of Prey does a pretty good job uh, showing like few aspects of that that haven't been? shown before yeah absolutely i mean i like i again like it, it feels they, it makes the world feel lived in it makes it feel like more than just a few dark roads and tall buildings like i <laughs> it struck me when i we watched canary walk to her apartment and it looks like a new york city yeah you know lower west side kind of place where or like a harlem where you you there's children and there's families and there's it just feels like a world it feels like a real life world and and my I was mentioning, you know, like things like like Andor, right? That like I'm yeah. not even a big Star Wars person, but like I'm interested in that because it's it says, okay, what if we take the Jedi's away? What if we take Joker and Batman away? What are the real people who have to inhabit this world around them feel like? And while we're still with these special characters, right? It's not like we're seeing like the random people who live in Gotham. Like we're still with characters who are heroes, but it still feels like we're seeing more people that are on the outskirts of these stories you know like the real movie would be the joker one where he's like okay i broke up with harley quinn and now i'm gonna fight the batman that's what we normally see but instead we're yeah. seeing and like maybe he'll see the explosion in one thing and be like hmm, what happened over there anyway and right. yeah. yeah and then he'd be like incidental moments yeah right. yeah but <laughs> then he'd be like he'd be wanting that, harley yeah. back because she always kept shit together in their right. relationship and, so, and that's and we saw that in the anime series too when her and ivy went out on the, you know together so it's like oh, oh yeah where he like runs for mayor eventually too <laughs> like like yeah that's he just, that, his own, he just needs his own victor's ass yeah exactly yeah yeah <laughs> we all need a little zazz in our life don't we <laughs> uh no no i think you're right i think that that's it's 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 that's why this hits different too in the same way that like guardians did frankly where it's it's like mm -hmm. yeah these aren't the kind of stories that you're you're, you're used to seeing you're and you're seeing these characters that like whatever call them like c-listers or, or whatever you want but like you're seeing a different aspect of things that isn't like the big knockdown drag out what i assume those snyder movies are because i refuse to watch them <laughs> like and it's and i think that that's again going back to like i wish that the that the hawkeye series had been more like the fraction run the the, uh, the graphic novel in that way that there's room for those kinds of stories that's like 
yeah, this person is like a superhero, but they still have to deal with like, you know, the plumbing's messed up or <laughs> like whatever, you know, like real life things that we all have to deal with. It's also more compelling, I, I think, to me. If, yeah, the, how I feel like at this point, right in the Marvel in the MCU, especially the scale was so grand, and it was like every movie we're fighting a, a planet killer, right. and like the aliens are, and it's all these this galactic warfare that we're in the middle of. But this is just like a diamond and some warlords, or like you know, and, and or like even I'm trying to think of another example, just like something that's more. Ant Man did the same thing in Marvel. World. Yeah, like Ant Man kept it really small in Marvel again until they screwed up and like, oh, let's introduce Kang to mm -hmm. Ant Man. <laughs> like, do you not remember like what this is supposed to be? This dude has like a, like an ankle monitor, man. Like, what do you think? It's, what do you think you're doing yeah. here? Like, and it's it's yeah. not understanding the appeal of the characters or just doing the thing where you kind of crowbar in. Did Did you stuff. guys uh, notice a certain Easter egg in the movie? I there was know. a few. Which one? Well, you Which... <laughs> well, I think Andy might know this one, but when Renee's about to like burn all her shit, she's in the hotel room. She's watching. There's a clip of Days of Our Lives with uh, Arlene Sorkin as Calope Jones dressed as a court jester, which inspired the Batman guys to like, oh, let's make a heart, a, a, a companion, a female companion for the oh, Joker. Oh, that inspired the character. Yes. Without know, Arlene Sorkin, cool. who also voiced it, R.I.P. There would not yeah. be a Harley Quinn without her. She yes. set the blueprint. Yeah. I think cool. didn't she show up in uh, uh, one of the Arrowverse things as Harley Quinn? But it was like a voice only cameo, and you just see yeah. like the back of her head. Yeah, she did. I the only one of the Arrowverse ones I've watched is uh, Legends of Tomorrow, which I think is a brilliant show. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That show rocks. Yeah, the yeah. Boma episode was great, and, and yeah. also great freaking uh, nat very naturalistic uh, pissing off the right wingers lesbian representation in that one as <laughs> <Yes>. well. <laughs> I just, I just think it's sweet that they did pay tribute in that way to Arlene Sorkin because again, like, I think it was because I even asked my mom, like, Mom, do you remember this one character who would dress up as a court jester on Days of Our Lives? She's like, Yeah, yeah. She has like an annoying high pitched voice. I'm like, That's that's Harley Quinn. That's the actress who voiced Harley Quinn in the first series. She's like, Oh. Mackenzie, we had a we did an episode on a movie called Solid Rock Trust where we had the director on, and the, the guy's been like second unit for like a lot of like big movies, like Marvel stuff, et cetera, et cetera. But for some reason, we got on the topic of soap operas. I have no idea why, but we could not get out of it for the life of us. And and, yeah. and the guy at one point is, was just like, uh, "Well, you guys sure do know a lot about soap operas." <laughs> I don't know anything about soap operas. I even said about Hey, certain people Summers... on the show knew lots about soap operas. <laughs> I know what so I was saying. Like, I, I was quiet. I was kind of quiet during that because I was like, I don't know anything about anything. It, it it did go on for quite a while, which was yeah. I don't remember if that's after party or if that was the main show. But it, in my defense, you know, uh, you know, we were talking <laughs> about Wesley. Snipes. This isn't a prosecution. There's, there's, there's no, there's no defense for. It. Come on, come on, <laughs> Wesley Snipes showing up. You will not be opera. incarcerated for watching soap operas, Andy. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've notified so the authorities. I'm talking Wesley Snipes here, people. Come on. He's, uh, Andy, Andy has a uh, felony soap opera watching. Uh, to... <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back on track here, people. That's enough. That's enough of that. So I, uh, I, have this, I have this clip of uh, that I wanted to talk about that I've been trying to bring into the conversation, but I was letting everyone else go. Uh, this, this is is it the episode of Hot Ones when Margaret Robbie's like at the first wing? She's like, oh my God, it's so spicy. Yeah, why I would brought, it be that? I, why, I brought, why it, I brought <laughs> why? Margaret Robbie talking about how the wings are spicy. Well, us. that was when she was what? doing Birds of Prey promo with the rest of the cast, and they were like, "This is fine." She's like, "Oh my we god, we can watch that so in the after party if you want, if that's what you're hinting." Um, that's, that sounds insane, but okay, sure. I mean, I don't know why you thought that's what it was, but no. I, mean, so yeah, I, I, found, I found. I guess it's logical, of, uh, and yeah, all right. I, I found a bunch of uh, <laughs> Jesus just, like, Christ, play the clip. <laughs> just like making of stuff, and this is so I found one of them. This might this might get us flagged, and I'm gonna take it off afterwards. But this is uh, this is mm -hmm. Margaret Robbie learning how to do the roller skating. At oh, least they kept you know, something like, from the comics. So they actually like had a, a crew of roller skaters that like trained her to do roller skating for this, which is funny because like the movie before this, she was doing fucking ice skating in I Tanya. So yeah. Well, it's the two different things, Forrest. <laughs> I know, but like she's learning skills. I feel like she's learning skills through her. She's really good at what she does. Danger, danger. Danger, danger. In the new 52 comic, there's a roller derby fight club sort of situation. I love that comic. I just kept saying, we have to have roller derby. We have to have roller derby. I can't think of a better fit for roller derby in an alternate universe. 
the world that she lives in and that this film is showing is perfect for roller derby because it is all about female empowerment. It is all about that strength. She's the only comic book character on roller skates. The roller skating community loves Harley Quinn. Gasler? They're going to on skates in the film. We're going to go crazy over this. For the derby scene, all of the skaters that are going to be in it are real roller derby skaters. Everybody on the track knows exactly what they're doing, and that'll also provide for a very cool-looking environment because it's completely natural. Everybody lives on their skates. People who come from totally different career paths and backgrounds that my life would have never intersected with them without this sport. So it's a pretty special place. Those girls are so rad. Even when you're a newcomer like me, they make you feel so welcome. The sense of community and loyalty and friendship is so strong. I mean, they're tough as hell. They dive headfirst into fights. They're insane. We are introduced to her skating as a very aggressive roller derby player. That aggression has to carry throughout the film and into the other action scenes that feature the roller skating. So there is absolutely an element of who Harley is in how Margot has to learn to skate. My skating was, I hope it was good. I definitely underestimated how hard it would be because I thought, oh, I've done Itonia, I've done a lot of ice skating, Just throw some wheels on it, it'll be the same thing. It definitely wasn't as painful as ice skating. I See, say. I'm not the only one who thought We that. were fortunate enough to work <laughs> with Rachel Rotten. Of course, everyone's got real Adobe names. It's really about getting her as comfortable on wheels as she was on ice. Today, we really worked on Margot being able to stop on a dime. We worked on some whips, which is a transfer of energy where somebody essentially throws a skater using your arms. Whip me! Okay. So this is not scary method act, but not being an asshole. So much speed when you're taking that energy transfer. We worked on her taking the canary cry, getting into that movement, sound propelling her forward. <laughs> yeah, move over, Tom Cruise. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. I, I, I was excited when I saw this scene. I was like, "Oh, it's just like in the comics." Yeah, that's great. I mean, I, I that's the kind of method acting I like. As yes. opposed to whatever I love how she called a roller uh, roller dummy when she, you know, when she <laughs> drops her unit on her and she's like, mm, and she's like, mm -hmm. mm. well, and yeah, I had an ex that did roller derby and like, everything that woman was saying is like, totally true. Everything's very tight knit. Like it's very, like it's, it's actually pretty interesting. Like they've, I think that was there a documentary that came out like some time so. ago. Yeah. When, I, I know it. Also I, too, I, yeah. th those are supposed to be her. We'll get our top fact checkers on it. <laughs> those are supposed to be her friends yet. They're like, Oh, she's actually not broken up with the joker. She's going to find another man. I'm like, Ooh. And then well, what's, she, you know, what, what's more drops those margaritas. What's more roller derby friends than uh, everybody kind of talking shit about you behind your back. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's a tough community out there. That, that was some hardcore <laughs> dazzler eraser who, who, you know, was like totally right. known for being roller disco. Um, Back yeah. in the uh, early 80s, when she had her own solo series. Um, so there we go. There you go. Dazzler. A acknowledge. The... Dazzler. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So I think that there's... They should, yeah, first turn, of all... those, they should turn those ro roller derby uh, skaters, though, like into a... I'd, I'd watch like a reality TV show about fucking roller derby. It feels like that they... Have they not done that? It feels like that's a thing that they, they would have. Yeah, it seems familiar. I don't know. I'm, I don't have cable, so I. I, just, I, just I don't know. Yeah. Whatever it happened, I just keep watching Rollerball. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Enough. Uh, so, <laughs> like, I think that it's it's notable that that she really thought hard about what Harley Quinn should be, I including like again doing like was it New Fifty Two? She was saying she was looking. I was like, that's awesome. Like, it's awesome that yeah. she did all the research, as opposed to like, and I love. The Raimi, uh, uh, Tobey Maguire Spider Man movies, but like Kirsten Dunst was like, I remember she's like, Do I look like I read comics? She said in like the commentary of the DVD, I almost threw it out the window. Yeah. I was like, So, first of all, I don't like you anymore. Secondly, yeah. like, <laughs> come on, maybe you should think about your role and the fact that, first of all, cast wrong, uh, for the character, like completely wrong. Oh, wow, but, yeah, but it, it, it made me okay. more of a Gwen Stacy, absolutely. It, it made me. 
appreciate so much more that people like Ryan Reynolds and Margot Robbie, again, not that those movies should necessarily be equated, that like go deep into the source material to find out, okay, what do I want to show? What are we, what are we, what kind of story we're we trying to get across? What kind of character are we trying to like define for people and like being thoughtful about it instead of just like playing the ball where it lies, so to speak. Right. I mean, like, well, I mean, it's, it's even like the, it's the, John, the John Cena thing, right? Like he's sure. gotten really into the, the peacemaker thing, which I think DC is like, like it's, it's a total D lister. Right. But like, <laughs> so like sexual I, think that, I think that DC has done a good job kind of uh, what, when King. they do a good job, right? Like the, the times that they yeah. do. It's when they have. Yeah, let's not give them too much credit. Yeah, it's it's, it's someone. <laughs> Even who, a blind gotten, chicken finds a kernel of corn now and again. <laughs> but it's, got, it's someone who's gotten extremely like uh, into whatever their character is and is willing to. It's like kind of almost like an actor forward kind of thing, rather than like uh, you know the the more like you know uh, abstract I guess um, ensembles that you can see in pretty much every other version of this. Well, and it's it's character based, right? And, and I think that the, when these things work, it's because you care about the characters. Again, why do Guardians of the Galaxy? Why why did that work? Because it's like a ragtag family of like freaks, nerds, and weirdos that all have like peccadillos. And Bradley and, Cooper and, and Bradley <laughs> Cooper in his finest role, yes. Exactly. Uh, and, uh, but like again, one of the things that people didn't realize that they were they were missing is that like getting getting into what makes those characters interesting. And, and fully rounded and, and, and she did such a fantastic job with this and then it was reinforced by the suicide squad with it with a much bigger budget that again people like except for <laughs> except for the gummo out uh cast members that um forrest was talking about that live exclusively <laughs> in bad tattoo parlors like <laughs> redefine the character in the popular imagination uh, to the point that like now you have you know, okay. I guess Gaga is gonna be uh, in, the, in the new Joker movie. Oh my I don't God. really want to get it's into Lady that. Lady Gaga. <laughs> but like, like the fact that that's even in discussion is like, well, that shows you how mainstream the character is. That everybody's about. favorite bird pop star, Gaga. <laughs> she, she's basically, you know, when someone said that Harley Quinn is is the DC's Spider Man because there's so many different interpretations of Spider Man out right now, currently, like mm, okay. Marvel animated. And I'm like, yeah, I see that. There's different. There's, there's, you know, you got the Harley Quinn series with Kaylee Cuoco. You got, you know, Margot Robbie. Whenever I she forgot, does. she does the voice of, the, of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. Yep. I, I never saw Big Bang Theory, or rather, I never intentionally watched any of it. Yeah, I saw yeah. a simple rules. Anyway, I, was, uh, but I, was, I spent three weeks stuck in my fucking grandma's a couple of weeks ago. She watches Big Bang Theory every single night. That's her favorite thing to watch every single night. It was that torture. sounds like cruel and unusual punishment we, we, to me. We yeah. would be streaming. We'd be streaming. And I'd stream downstairs because that's where the Wi-Fi was, and I would be hearing like, you know, canned laughter at things that weren't even funny, and I could tell they weren't <laughs> funny from the other room, <laughs> from a distance. There's, there's, but, no, there's no way a show about nerds, which my 93 year old well, grandma can get the jokes. She's never seen any of those. Things. <laughs> yeah, it's a show about smart people for dumb people, and, as and opposed another, to it's always sunny in Philadelphia, which is a show about dumb people for smart people. And another thing too was that. Margaret Robbie spent like a good like two almost two years playing Harley Quinn because as soon as she was done filming Birds of Prey, she started doing the Suicide Squad. Suicide, Suicide Squad. And so she was like, I have to take a break. It's kind of daunting playing Harley. And I'm like, oh. So you can you'd be like you? like uh, Fade Rotha and, and uh, be stuck in the Elvis voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, What's that guys, kid's name? Butler. Austin Butler. Sorry. If you guys remember we'll the Actors on Actors episode with her and Killian Murphy, my, she explained. My, my knife, chip. And chat. <laughs> she, oh. she, ex she explained that um <laughs> oh my god i'm gonna be i'm gonna be go ahead go 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 it's all you it's all you she explained how it's difficult for australians because their palate is different from like an american so like it t it took her a lot longer to build the muscles up to do the accent oh. and i remember when she did Wolf of Wall Street, she did that accent perfectly. And they're like, yeah. well, you got to tweak it a little bit to play Harley. And they're like, well, how? she's in her dialogue coach was like, Which Matthew, you got a nail salon. Gotham accent, you know? What? <laughs> Gotham accent, yeah. Exactly. Well, like, imagine you're in a nail salon, you just got acrylics on. She's like, okay, and I'm not talking to you. I was talking to her. And I'm like, okay, that's how you do it. So I got to remember that I'm at a nail salon with acrylics on. They still have to dry. And that's how she nailed the accent. Yeah, the the physicality like, of it. Okay, sure. Now oh that's. God. You should try to make Renee do an American accent. <laughs> <laughs> Coming make Friday, yeah. Mackenzie. Our Friday, we're, we're, we have Renee coming on. I want to see what, she, she's talking Australian classic, so we're going to make her talk in an American accent. Mackenzie, <laughs> one of our regulars, Renee, who runs the Night Shift podcast, she's Australian. That's that's why that would be relevant, and that actually might be hilarious. We should maybe do that. Honestly, I think McGregor's American accent's kind of bad in this. 
like shots really, on the house really, like it's, it's very it's weird. Weird. Really yeah, weird yeah but it shows you his culture though like 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 he's supposed to be a a uh son it fits who, the character son. yeah he, he yeah. Got, like he's so like, somebody weird. of money he he's got that, that weird, uh, though, transatlantic right. accent kind of and yeah so like right. his Weird accent works in that way. You kind of forced my hand here. <laughs> yeah, it's almost you, like Hepburn esque. <laughs> a when little you get bit. All excited though in the first couple of things, I just kept thinking about Duff Man because he's like, "Oh yeah, shots on the house. Oh yeah." And it's like that's that's the thing that came through my mind. I was like, "Also, I really want to go to that Duff club because it looks fucking... so dope." No. Speaking of which, how do you spell mercenary? Are you doing the oh? I was gonna say, are you doing a wordle? What what's what, what, what? <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. You you want to show off these the 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 cards here? We can show off the cards. All right, here she's got the cards, people. So that's... and I got the last one too. She's got the cards, people. She's got the cards, people. I know. I know. Yeah. I did Alex Jones voice for that, but here we are. <laughs> uh, so Mackenzie, I, I mean, like just the general thoughtfulness of the character. Uh, and, and Margot Robbie is like very d diligence in, in bringing it to the screen in this way. Any, any thoughts on that? Any, anything you'd like to comment on? Um, not probably anything more that's already been said. I mean, it's just like you can feel the love in the character. And I think that's why it's so intoxicating to watch. And I think you feel it with Barbie. You feel it like I think she, to me, as an actor and producer and just human being, seems like a very genuine and kind and intentional and empathetic person. And I think that makes her a great artist. And I think it shows up in her roles and you can just tell when you watch this, how much she has lived in this character and how much she has loved right. this character. And so, yeah, it's just, I think it's what makes people want to see her keep playing Harley because you just, it feels good to have a character be in such loving hands with an actor. Yeah. It, it was weird when, when James Gunn was announced as like the head of DC or whatever, everyone was like, all right, it, it, again, the Snyder folks are like, Oh my God, no more Margo as Harley. We, 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 10 years has gone. And I'm like, Oh my God, guys, <laughs> Viola Davis has survived a, a, a universe change. Margot Robbie's definitely going to survive because, I mean, he's he took her like James Gunn took her interpretation of Harley seriously in the Suicide Squad. Like he didn't want to change anything, just progress yeah. from what was already there. Just so like, like a bigger just, budget. Uh, just calm down, calm <laughs> yeah. down, people. It's not the last of Margot. Calm story. down, people. Settle down. <laughs> Harley's gonna be fine, I people. Well, now that James Gunn's in charge. They're going to get rid of Mark Robbie so fast. Alex Jones is a pivot. I'd rather give it to Jared Leto, but whatever. It's, uh, you it's, know, it's, it's, I, Alex, it's Alex Jones say it. Release the Snyder Cut. <laughs> Damn it. Release the air cut. Um, they, they, don't, they don't want you to see the Snyder Cut because of all the good things that are in it. <laughs> it's, it's not... <laughs> That's pretty good though, but it, we should we shouldn't be letting him anything fun because that dude sucks. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, there's since there's no way to pivot off of that. Letterbox, of course, is a uh, social media site for film lovers to talk out with the two each other about the films they love, maybe the films that they didn't love, maybe the films that they're still waiting for the cut to be released of that they made themselves a fan cut. Who knows? Of course, all of this is uh, best expressed succinctly. You got uh, you know room for everybody. It's a bottom up democracy. Now, as the Siskels and the Eberts of the world, everyone gets to chime in. Everyone gets to have their say. Everyone gets to opine if you will and of course all of this is uh, collected every week by yours truly for this bit where we put them on screen and we react to them these are the letterbox one-liners for birds of prey let's go i was waiting for joaquin phoenix joker to turn up at the end take me back harley i promise i've changed i'm a different person now <laughs> literally <laughs> that would yes. have been funny. yo i would have i would have loved that that, that would have been or maybe jack nicholson oh my god <laughs> if get him out of retirement for that yeah you back harley i'm a different I promise person now. I I change <laughs> now a hundred years old <laughs> right, exactly. that that and would be like beyond. return the joker folks he's he's i hear tell of him just sitting up like, you know what i do i sit by my tree and sometimes i fall asleep so imagine that's what he comes out of retirement to do that would be god tears he's, he's like kidding he's me like, He's like Harley. Without you, I got trapped in a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how I've aged since you left, Harley. <laughs> I'm 27 years old. <laughs> I need you back. I don't know how to run the time machine. <laughs> all right, all right. It's overbuilt now. Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn is single-handedly the best comic book film casting of all time. I agree. Take oh, yeah, that, Henry really, really Cavill. That was gonna get real passionate about it, like, you know, I mean, from the jump. Yeah, like the fact that she was reading comics that had nothing to do with Harley Quinn, 
Yeah. And she just got stuck in like a rabbit hole and was like, I've read so many of these comics by now that I can now pitch my own movie. Yeah. yeah Hell yeah. She did her own research. I don't think I've ever read that much of anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that Harley Quinn got rid of the toxic people in her life and made new friends. Yes. Aww. Yeah. It's the friends she made along the way. Exactly. Especially, I, I, spe- especially those friends who are probably going to arrest her again if she like got into any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, now she doesn't work for the police anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that would be a citizen. That would be a citizen's yeah. arrest. <laughs> she had road rage at a bank. So that I'm a sovereign a citizen. <laughs> <laughs> Not that far off from the question. Oh, <laughs> uh, but I, I also really liked that uh that it was like, oh well Harley Quinn's too sociable to do like a standalone film. She has to have like a, a bunch of people that she makes friends with, and it's like Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Harley Quinn really is the it girl of the DCU. She's hell the it yeah. Girl. Yeah. Thanks. That's that's that's, that's that's just an unimpeachable <laughs> fact. That's all Jack Nichols <laughs> Jack Nicholson comes back and he's like, I hear you're the it girl. <laughs> I hear you're the it girl of the DC universe. <laughs> Take me back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the real winner of this film is Harley Quinn finally getting to eat her sandwich at the end. Yeah, I would have pissed. Nice I would have been pissed number one if the hyena was dead, and I also yeah. would have been pissed <laughs> eating her sandwich at the end. Now those, I'm wandering around Chinatown. That, that, yeah, those both have been unacceptable endings. For sure. <laughs> they are my emotional support lesbians. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Retweet. Retweet. <laughs> 129 likes. Very good. Very good. Bitches be like, I know a place, and then take you to an abandoned fun house in order to sell you to Ewan McGregor. <laughs> 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 I had a nickel for every time that's happened to me. <laughs> this happens all the time. It's constant. Mm-hmm. And you gotta stop swallowing every diamond you get your hands on. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, they look delicious. It it's enough. It's enough already. Forbidden, forbidden fruit. <laughs> exactly. It tastes twice as sweet. Yes. It just means I can get to those brownies again. <laughs> The x lax brownies. Birds of prey. Here's a bunch of pretty women in cute clothes. Me. Oh shit. Birds of prey. They kick ass. Oh fuck. Birds of prey. They learn to trust and support each other. Oh god. Birds of prey. There's neon lighting. Me. Stop. I'm already dead. Oh my god. I can't believe I wrote that. <laughs> I, was, I had to look to make sure it wasn't you. Incredible. But... <laughs> incredible. Incredible. <laughs> Fantastic. And, and that artwork too at uh, in the corner. Oh uh, yeah, the custom art. Uh, this is my friend Louise. Huntress, please. I am on my knees, begging you to be my girlfriend. Oh my god, yeah. Cody, you wrote that. <laughs> yes, well, look. Look. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um, the best part was them driving around a convertible with a hyena in the back seat. Because that's how you do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Two and a half stars. Yeah, get out of here. A dude wrote that. <laughs> It's, uh, it's like they're sublime or something. Uh, those are the Letterbox one liners for Birds of Prey. Please, please, please follow the show at Movie Night Extra at our Letterbox HQ account. We're posting stories of all the great uh, movies that we cover here, uh, as well as additional content, things along those lines. Uh, follow us on there if you use that platform. Grievance, this whole damn show, that's Forrest at Always Flacco, your host over there. He's. Um, He's on there and he's 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 online. He's he's logging stuff. I saw you did a picnic at Hanging Rock already, so that's that's yeah. cool. Uh, I of course am at Kona Neutron. Normally I'd be pointing to my thing, but we decided to highlight a comment instead in mid sentence. Huntress fan club president is is what I am. <laughs> Enough said. At Kona Neutron, doing the highbrow, the midbrow, the populist fair. Follow me along for the Criterion Challenge, as well as film school dropouts if you dare. Uh, J Andrew Elseworld, I see you over there. I'm a hitchhiking apparently too. Uh, pain is for dummies. I also, you'd be a dummy if you liked weird stuff and didn't follow Jay Andrew World because he's watching all the weird stuff. So you don't have to. And maybe so you can. I don't know. It is not for me to say really. Uh, but he's doing it either way. And uh, follow him right about now too on Letterboxd. Ugh. Harley down there voted for Bernie. Sometimes she'll even log into her Letterboxd account and uh, log. You logged this one, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I logged this one like a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah, so. she's even on the show to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Long time coming for this one, though. But she's on Letterboxd as well. At um, Christina. That's your old handle. Mackenzie, my friend Mackenzie Wilkes, is uh, you're on Letterboxd. You're the Austin Danger podcast, Criterion Connection. 
Uh, those are your shows. We'll get into that in the plugs. At this point, we're only talking about Letterbox. That's the only one allowed. Uh, at Mackenzie Wilkes, um, which is which is your name, and that is what is your handle. So yes, I appreciate is. that about you. Same same thing as me. Uh, let's uh, hear from our sponsors and hit the plugs, huh? Tonight's podcast is brought to you by Yebiga, a Balkan Rakia spirit plum brandy that brings Serbia to the American shores in an authentic and appreciative way. Care of Billy Gould, basis for faith no more, and Rakia appreciator. Rakia is a traditional spirit enjoyed at weddings, funerals, and life events. However, more and more, it's being enjoyed everywhere on a night out with friends or as a casual drink. Get a bottle today in liquor stores and bars across America. Go to yabiga.com to see where it's available near you. All right. Elseworlds, take it away. Please. All right. Plugs. If you're watching us on YouTube, please do those YouTube things. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. And, of course, the big ask is watch the video at the end. That allows you to hear that <laughs> great Conan Neutron song. And that allows other movie fans to find our content, which we want to see happen. Um, here that happens, yes. Yes. If you're on social media, uh, we, we are, too. You can find us on Facebook. Uh, Twitter, uh, Blue Sky, Threads, uh, X. Um, Why are you yeah. calling it that? I don't pets. know. Pets.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get a pets.com account. If you call right. it that, exactly. I'm going to play X, going to give it to you next time, Andy. Okay. Yeah. No, I, Nuke the I whole stream. I mean, just, you know, we'll stick it twice. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a nuclear option, really, of, of the plugs. Yeah. But yeah, no. Um, Find us wherever you happen to, you know, uh, oh, I forgot Instagram, didn't I? Um, but sure, I, I, I actually was not going to say it, but I was like, <laughs> you did forget one of the biggest ones. Yes. But. Yeah. F- find wherever you happen to be uh, uh, on social media. You know, I'm not going to push any of them on you because they're all garbage sites in their own way. Um, but, <laughs> so but, please follow us on all these garbage sites. Thank yes, you. <laughs> find us on the garbage sites. Follow us. Um, yeah, yeah, but you want to talk yeah. garbage is our discord. Uh, it's full of wonderful people and wonderful conversations. So you can actually, uh, uh, if you you know want to say hi to us over there, that you can do that as well. But either way, say hi to us on one of the social medias, and we will definitely answer back. Christina is uh, hosting these watch parties that, that are a lot of fun. If you if you have, not everyone can do it because of work hours and stuff like that, but uh, they, they are they. I am a convert as someone that doesn't like watching movies on the computer. It's fun. Yeah, and then you know you can join in the conversation afterwards. Absolutely. Um, we have a Patreon, uh, so find us over on Patreon if you want to give us more money and to uh, actually support us. Um, yeah. People, let's get right in the meat of the matter. If you want to give us money, go to Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, no, to support us, go over to Patreon. Um, we really do you know, need your help to kind of keep the show running. And uh, yeah, Everyone's broke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially me. I haven't made money all month. B-R-O-K-E broke. But yeah, uh, that, that allows you <laughs> to have access. What a to pivot! This. What what a professional move that was. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but, but here's what it gets to you: you get to have access. Oh, great! Uh, to uh, parties, uh, I'm ready. Which, yes. which is, uh, you know, where we get to uh, let our hair down. Um, although mine already is. And uh, yeah, it's, it's it's melding with black canaries. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but but if you want more of this kind of stuff, uh, where, where we kind of know why you would, but yeah, um, we, we have a plenty of bonus content that you have access to, uh, and we are actually doing a after party right after this show. He said authoritatively with no one paying attention. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes. Now I'm gonna um, do another cosplay. I called it. I called it the. Uh, wait, I had I had a good name for it. Hold on. Which Mackenzie is well, you're welcome to join us, but it's it's not a requirement. requirement. Yeah, if if you need to go, watch you fulfill your contract just to leave. If you want. <laughs> yeah, part no of the Harley Quinn open season after party. Yeah, fantastic, mm-hmm. excellent. Maybe I'll ask uh, uh maybe I'll ask Mackenzie about Lisa Frankenstein, which I'm very oh yeah. About. I'm not Ooh, concerned. Concerned. Not concerned about it. <laughs> I'm concerned about this movie. Concerned. I'm deeply concerned about Lisa Frankenstein. Concerned. Looking into it. It keeps me up at night when I'm thinking of Lisa Frankenstein. <laughs> I, uh, it's, it's like, that is the perfect. It's a little friend member, but that's pretty good. That is that is the perfect uh, Elon Musk thing. There's like a Lisa Frankenstein underneath this thing. He's like concerned, looking into it. <laughs> but I'm just picturing like a Lisa Frank painting of Frankenstein, and that's what I Ooh. get whenever I hear that. Um, but uh, Conan, you're over there. I was more on topic than most things. I'll give it to you, <laughs> <laughs> Conan. You're over there. You're uh, you know fronting yes. your, your show, uh, Product Reversal, behind you there. I'm. Yes, it's it's literally in, in case behind people, me. Yeah. You know, curious what's your uh, what it says behind your head. That's what it says, Protonic Reversal. 
People are talking about it more and more, especially right now when you just said it. Yes. Um, which, which is a great music interview show, if you don't know. Mm -hmm. yes. Print it real. Print it, <laughs> print it real. No. <laughs> exactly. It's, it depends on where my head is, how much you can read. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I guess I'll rescue on this one. Uh, Kid Kill and Go Powers, Gun Club, uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, um, The Cramps. He's on on Thursday, so that's that's him coming up uh, for a while. So excited about you that. mean you mean Google Muck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, indeed I do. Yeah, so yeah. big episode should be a good one. Uh, the Ralph Spite episode, which of course he's Joe Biafra's band leader from Dead Kennedys and um, Freak Accident and Fixum's Family, just went up to the regular feeds. So, but of course, one dollar a month at patreon.com slash Bertonic Reversal gets those episodes to you sooner. Bernie Sanders model, lots of people just advance access. Um, and that is the show that I do on Thursdays. That is my show. Ten one. years, ten years in in three weeks. What is that in podcast years? 90? Right? Yes. It's a lot. Yes. Ten that's, years? That's Jesus, how long? It's more it's more than that. It's like 150. <laughs> it's, it's like yeah, it's, it's a it's a lot. It's a lot. So yeah. I don't Yet uh, there's a bunch of really cool stuff coming. I, I, um, I'll, I'll just say that. I, I mean, big, it's big things coming. Much cooler than what you've already had. So you yeah. know, just what you've just had. So like, like that's something. T tune if in. Yes. Yes. Tune in. Uh, and of course, um, uh, Co Co if you enjoy the music of the show, Conan is the one who does all the music for the show, and mm -hmm. uh, he has his own band called Conan Neutron of the Secret Friends, which you can uh, get. Albums right at uh, Neutron Friends on Bandcamp.com. Adult Prom being the newest one. Split LP yep. with Lung, which uh, Lung is fantastic too. So like, you know, you you're say, not just you getting a half like, a CD. You're getting like, a whole oh, CD none. that's really great. You said like, I, oh, none. How much I was, you guys got? None? I was, I was kind of perplexed by that as well, but I was going to let it <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we just got back from a West Coast tour uh, with McCluskey, uh, L.A., San Francisco, et cetera. I met Maddie, actually, uh, from, uh, from the mm -hmm. comment section. Uh, well, ooh, that's a bad thing to call someone. Maddie from the comment section. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the, much more Maddie than that. Maddie the Mod. Uh, Maddie like the Mod. Like that, there we go. I feel like that brings us back to like the Gawker days. Like, yo, this is <laughs> Maddie from the comment section. <laughs> Maddie, exactly. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is all released. So we got uh, um, uh, the shows with Brainiac, Part Chimp, Arc Ray Noise Quintet, uh, Body Futures, uh, Cult of Lip, uh, Madison, Milwaukee, Cincinnati, Louisville, Chicago, and of course, Catterwall. Louisville. Uh, the, the Louisville. The, the, the four day festival that I run with my label guy that is uh, about 60 days away. 60, 60, not 1 6, thankfully. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Buy my music, I'm broke too. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you can actually go there at, uh, right on uh, Bandcamp. You know, Neutron Friends on Bandcamp. Maddie in the comments section, new band name. <laughs> there you go, Maddie and the mods. Yo, um, Conan, you you over there on Broke Tonic Reversal? <laughs> I <have to> look. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's not let's not get into that. <laughs> But yeah, Neutron uh, Friends uh, Bandcamp .com. Go there, buy buy uh, all of the albums. But buy early and buy often. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can get everything for for one good price. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. I should write that I down. Either. I yeah. really should. Think, but, remember, but, think uh, global, buy local. You know, on your on your local IP address, go to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, re records, T-shirts, all that stuff. I, I'm uh, I'll probably post something about some of the packages and stuff coming up soon. If you're following me on social media, you probably won't see it because they want you to pay for that. But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what a plug section. Yes. Um, and we got the dates and I guess we go on to Christina. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I was just, it's... I guess, I guess she's next. She's uh, here. Yeah. It's, it's uh <laughs> patreon.com. So Forrest, what episode is this? Like, how many episodes of this? Like, it's like two hundred, right? Two ten. Two Jesus ten. Christ. And this is and this is like, I mean, he started doing the plugs, you know, pretty pretty, pretty early, early on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Can you believe yeah, this? Yeah, else was, and I'm like, hmm? I'm the worst person to be doing it, and you can see why I said that. <laughs> FYI, I'm totally <laughs> available to, to fill in. <laughs> it's so efficient, dude. It's so efficient when she does it. Like, you're you should be scared, Andy. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it'll be great once we have I money to pay Christina, and then she gets to come on and do that for do plugs for work. You're like five dollars a plug. <laughs> it's, a, it's a street value. Yeah. Yes, yeah. pure uncut plugs. Um, but yeah, 
Christina's over there on Twitch. Uh, Y'all should definitely be checking her out. Mm -hmm. Yep. We cosplay over here. Yeah. Uh, anything coming up? That That's we right, do? girl. Give him nothing. Give him nothing. What are you guys playing over here? I we're uh, we're going to be going over P. I right think now. what we're going to be doing tomorrow is going over P. Uh, Diddler and all that situation and the fact that Israel probably attacked the uh, DEI uh, bridge. So that's going to be fun. All right. Okay. That's Yeah. So lots of like card hitting. <laughs> Yo, P, 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 I, I need I need your expert opinion on this. P Diddy's like kind of Israeli coded, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's there we go. <laughs> 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 and of course, if you want to support that, uh go to uh uh Patreon. If you want to, you want to support that. <laughs> if you want to support P. Diddy in Israel. <laughs> How about Christina? <laughs> Christina if you want to support you want to if you want to support P. Diddy doing the right of return and going back to Israel, you know, just to just to escape the charges. Someone tipped him off to the escape the country. And, I, I, and I'm wondering who the fuck that was. Suge Knight was right. And yet yeah, I shouldn't really be giving Suge Knight credit considering Suge Knight's in prison for murder. So, yeah. Yeah. Suge he's probably not for... listening. I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. He's, like, he's, like, he's probably like, oh, wow. How terrible. He's like, when when I'm out of here, movie night extravaganza. You yeah, he's gonna he's gonna hang Forrest out a window like he did Vanilla Ice. <laughs> it it goes to it like a solo shot, a one shot of him in the cell, which is a single tear. Yeah, and he's, he's, <laughs> and he's, doing, he's doing like the fucking crunches on the floor in the cell. He's like, ba, yeah. ba, ba, ba. Uh, <laughs> music playing That's in the good. background. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, and, but, uh, let's go. Yeah, Mackenzie is over there. Have a uh, couple Jesus podcasts Christ. of her own. Why, why is she still hanging out as anybody's guest? But. <laughs> <laughs> but she is. We're thankful for that. Uh, yes, I'm on two podcasts, Austin Danger Podcast, which started as a bit, and we've committed to the bit for over 100 episodes where we watch films connected to Austin Powers, which basically just gives us an excuse to watch a bunch of great movies that are connected by like random crew members, but also Mike Myers. It's... That is right up my alley because I, I love Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah, that was your first cosplay, uh... wasn't it? All right, that was my first cosplay ever was Austin Powers. I was five years old. It was cute. It was cute. Oh. I love it. Well, we love Austin, too. And our next episode is going to be Mission Impossible, I believe, as people are hearing this. And it's my first watch of the movie ever. So I've the never seen Mission Impossible. The very Mission Impossible coded. <laughs> the, um, they, uh, you just had a great episode on Sideways, which uh, cause we just did two hours. Yeah, we were like lined Sideways up with Alexander Payne. Yeah. And we have a lot of back catalog of so many just kind of we are our our. our Kind of core is night like nineties early aughts studio comedies, but we we go to many other places, and so it's a fun pod. And kind of on the other flip side of type of film, I do a podcast about the Criterion Collection Criterion called Connection. the Criterion Connection. We just did Akira Kurosawa's High and Low, and next we'll be doing Bong yeah. Joon Ho's Parasite. So a lot of big episodes coming up, but another kind of backlog, more you know, upper crust uh, movies compared to some of the stuff we watch in Austin Pod, but. It, basically anywhere you go you'll get a need met if what kind of films based on what kind of films you like so come hang out we're at austin danger pod and and at criterion connection pretty much everywhere so mackenzie did you see that they were selling the uh the cryogenic chamber from austin yes. powers for like <laughs> yes for like a uh, it's <laughs> one of our ongoing bits that we report on all austin news that occurs in the world of austin powers and it's usually us finding ebay things like that and just talking about it so, um yeah we, we we're up to date on all austin powers news at all times this is the only Austin Powers news I've heard lately, but <laughs> I, I did hear about. They've been thinking about doing Austin Powers four, but I think like Mike Myers it's is always that play Austin, but like he ain't too old to play Doctor Evil. But whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Kev have some ideas for what Austin Powers four could be, and one day we will reveal them on a very special episode. We should have you guys on to do Austin Powers one day, and then. Oh, could... yeah. Has anyone ever done that? Any, any crossover? Have you done a crossover? I'm no, we, uh... we haven't talked Austin on anybody else. Maybe I'll I would. Austin Powers I'd be down for, for that because because <laughs> Kev's uh, uh Kev's awesome. Yeah, yeah we could see Christina uh, squeeze into her old uh, costume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, have all, I have all three Austin awesome Power movies on uh, on VHS. I have the VHS. VHS. Wow. I just bought the Blu-ray of all three of them together. <laughs> the I've been collecting. Yes, I need 4K Austin Powers. I went to I when I was a kid, we used to go to, like this library fair because my like we we would go up to visit my grandpa's house in Maine. There's this library fair, and they'd always sell like VHS tapes, and like there was a VHS like you know at like a uh, at at the house. So I'd buy like a bunch of them, and then one year they had all three Austin Powers. They had, like multiple copies of them. Oh man, <laughs> copies still available. 
Uh, <laughs> both those shows are good. I subscribe to them. So Thank you. Uh, ch- if you if you like this show, you might like those shows too. And and it's interesting that uh, you you again you got you got both sides. You got the more populous fair and the and the highbrow. And I of course enjoy both because mm-hmm. I'm an esthete. Oh, <laughs> taking this cosplay off. <laughs> but uh. Yeah. But uh, Mackenzie, do you have final thoughts about this movie? About anything we didn't talk about? I feel like we talked about a lot of it, but sure did. <laughs> yeah, I can't think of a thing that wasn't mentioned. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we kind of talked about the we, not. I mean, the Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend moment is incredible. I I love. I say a lot on ADP. I love a big swing. I love audacious filmmaking, and I I love moments like that that like you could say weren't necessary, but I loved them because they just pulls us further into harley's psyche and her her mind and her heart it's just it's great and yeah i mean the heart the humor the action the love the excitement it all just combines i think kathy kathy on should get so much more credit for really building a cohesive incredible film i have a friend named josh whose review was like all the best stuff of this was just scooped again for the suicide squad and like i feel like this really informed at least tonally how they handled harley in that movie and and Kathy Ann really did that, her and Margot together. And so I just think this is a great job. And I hope she gets to do more. Like, I really hope we get to see her her eye on something comic book or not uh, sometime soon. All right, Christina, final thoughts. Whenever I'm bored and I'm like dog sitting somewhere and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put on Birds of Prey. This is like my comfort movie. This is the movie I watch whenever I have nothing else to watch or if I should be watching a movie from this podcast. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to watch Birds of Prey again. You're like, until the end of the world's how long? I'm going back to Birds of Prey. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, it's it's so much fun. Uh, it's very cohesive. The, the costume set, like, thank God we have another Harley cosplay to do besides that god-awful Suicide Squad one. Um, and it, it really goes to show that without birds of prey there would be no barbie so y'all better be thinking margot robbie and take her and 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 know for this know this that sims movie is gonna fucking rock <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it better be in simlish they should have gotten uh they should have gotten the, the past life celine song to do it wish <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> celine already, song sims yeah well she did it with uh you know she did the the one where uh it's <laughs> yeah it's the play yeah I'm not um, stripping. I'm just changing into another. Oh, country. that's right. You yeah, you reference that so much. I can't believe you reference that much. I, but I, it's, it <laughs> is true that that was a thing that happened. That was a big yeah. COVID Celine song thing. I forgot about. Yeah, that. Celine song did the, uh, you know, it's the it's the seagulls playing. <laughs> but uh, Andy, final thoughts. It's so nice to actually see a good comic book movie because Lord knows I've seen them all. Most of them are good. <laughs> I mean, you know, how many times do I have to watch Steel? Um, no. Um, the answer Ooh. is zero. Zero times. Zero yeah. times. Watch. Most of the things you do, the answer is you don't have to read it. You know, yeah, no, no one is no, but I do it anyway. <laughs> you can find it on my letterbox. Um, but yeah. anyways, yeah, no, it's it's so great to see actually a good comic book movie. And and the fact that they, uh, you know, to make a good comic book movie, you don't need to make it dark and gritty like uh, every single fucking Snyder wannabe uh, tr- tries right. to do. You make it good and you make it based on the comic book. And this is truly like, you know, uh, I've, I've invoked it before the Palmiati Amanda Connor run, um, like, like the iconic, uh, they didn't even create the characters, but they kind of made like the most iconic, uh, run of, uh, Harley Quinn. And I think this is a good, like, uh, addendum to that. So, so it's so great to, to actually see as opposed to, you know, what I usually watch. <laughs> <laughs> wow a startling moment of self-awareness okay mm-hmm. all right conan uh yeah folks do not give credit to how funny this is uh, kind of reinforcing andy's point that like all the bright colors you know i love the unreliable narrator narration uh at the heart of it's a great story about autonomy codependence and overcoming toxic relationships uh, but it also doesn't forget that its first job is to entertain and in a world in a world where so many films try so hard to be important it's kind of nice to see something that it's it's just an entertaining story and especially for what was going on with the dcu at the time uh, and still technically mm. it's just a breath of fresh air uh, i think Emma gregor's amazing in this um your girlfriend's really amazing in this i was just about to say mary elizabeth winston you know i'm a fan uh she's a consistently good player and uh i mean credit where credit's due man margot robbie's a, a, she's a treasure right and this this is amazing that she pulled this off and you can't see the thoughtfulness and what she was doing with it then i don't even know what to tell you 
Um, I, shout out to Rosie Perez too. Great character work. It, that could have been like a one note character, and it, and it isn't uh, worth it. It would have been nice to see some stuff uh, more with the team, but I think it's it's very well balanced. And uh, for the Funhouse fight scene alone, this this is this is an all timer as far as I'm concerned. A very deeply entertaining movie, uh, especially considering pre the Suicide Squad, the DCU is mostly dismal, confused, and desperate. And I would have loved to have seen this in the theater. Still would like to, actually. It was, maybe it was maybe not, with this it was, panel. It was desperate enough that they finally let a woman take it. <laughs> That's what it took. Right, exactly. Jesus Christ. <laughs> in, a world, uh, in a world full of Zack Schneider fans. You in know, a world. You know. <laughs> I'm glad we finally got to do it too, because we were supposed to do this about a year ago. So, and it, I'm super excited that we got to bring Mackenzie in. Mackenzie, thank you so much for doing thank the show. You. With us. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. And we're we're gonna be in the after party in a few minutes. And so, maybe I'll get another egg sandwich. Who knows? So join us. <laughs> the join us for the. Just don't use DoorDash. You'll get canceled on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>